The following is a presentation of WGN Sports. It's a beautiful spring night for baseball at PNC Park in Pittsburgh as the Chicago Cubs in first place in the Central try to keep the Pirates reeling. They've lost five of the last six without their slugger Brian Giles. Mark Pryor to the mound in game two of this weekend set tonight here on WGN Sports. Hello again everybody with Steve Stone Chip Carey boy it's great to be back at the ballpark. Beautiful weather tonight and boy the Cubs bats are as hot as the thermometer. Everybody's slugging the baseball for Dusty Baker's team right now. For the first time in a long time it is hitters weather and the Cubs have been hitting the baseball all over the lot one through six hitting over 300. Look at those numbers. Everybody's surprised by the offense. Everybody thought the pitching would be good but they didn't think the Cubs would be hitting like they're hitting this early and they've done it early in the ball game Steve four straight games now they try for scoring four runs in the first inning great at bat from Hesop Choi was the key blow last night put the Cubs on top three to nothing as Choi rifled the ball off the right center field wall and hopefully more the same against Kip Wells Mark Pryor goes for the Cubs he threw the ball OK his last time out his uh, standards are so extraordinarily high the one real problem he had was fielding and then throwing the baseball hopefully that won't rear its head tonight well, he's one and lifetime against Pittsburgh and on the other side of the field Kip Wells has thrown the ball very well lifetime against the Cubs. He's 2 and 0 with a low ERA and some say he has the best stuff on this very talented pirate pitching staff. Cubs are in first place just about everybody in the division has already lost at least once today. There is a doubleheader going on with the Reds and Expos down in San Juan. So there's ground to be gained as we like to say in this central division race. We'll have starting lineups from beautiful PNC Park in Pittsburgh right after this. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Comcast cable and high speed internet proud sponsor of Chicago Cubs baseball. Dodge you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. The Illinois lottery where players have more fun. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Chicago Cubs. And by Southwest Airlines, more than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. On the WB's Big Sunday after Gilmore Girls' beginnings, it's all new. Good witches make naughty nymphs. Yeah, you know, frolicking little tree sprites. Well, I'm not sure we should be doing this. I must have to give them a little something something. How did this happen? Can we go back to the whole, like, <sighs> part? All new charmed naughty nymphs, then. Critics say Black Sash is a winner. I'm not going down without a fight. Black Sash. Sunday night at 7 on WGN. You know him as the Golden Boy. He's Yori Boy. Soon they'll meet Mono E Mono. Don't miss the action when superstar Oscar De La Hoya defends his world title against former world champ Yori Boy Compass. May 3rd, live on pay per view. Compass wants the crown. Oscar says, Come and get it. It's the Golden Boy and Yori Boy, man to man. It's a night of champions brought to you by Budweiser. Hey, Cubs fans, keep your eye on the ball. It's a line drive deep to right. That ball is gone. Every time a Cubs player hits a homer at Wrigley, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cub homer, write down the distance along with your name and address and send it to WGN-TV. Ten winners will receive two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cubs homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest Airlines, official airline of the Chicago Cubs. Big crowd on hand tonight in Pittsburgh. Not only are the first place Cubs in town, but it's fireworks night here at PNC Park. And uh, the Cubs have certainly set off some first inning fireworks of late. They've scored four runs in the first inning in their last three games. And the Cubs come into this second game of the series atop the National League Central and atop the National League overall in runs scored. A trend that Dusty Baker hopes continues with this. 
Cubs Pepsi lineup. Mark Rudzelanik leads off, followed by Alex Gonzalez, Sammy Sosa, Moise Salu, and Hesop Choi to follow. With Corey Patterson, Mark Bellhorn, Damian Miller, and Mark Pryor rounding out the lineup card. We'll take a look at the defense and how they'll line up behind Kip Wells. It's Sanders, Lofton, and Stairs left to right. Ramirez, Nunez, who you're looking at right there, Makoviak and Simon in the infield, Kendall behind the plate, and hard throwing Kip Wells on the hill. The significant of Nunez, Jack Wilson not in the ball game. He's been airless in 40 straight games, so they're not shoring up their defense any, although Nunez is pretty good. And Kip Wells might be the Pirates' best right now. He's got a great fastball, great sinking movement, but hasn't gotten any run support whatsoever, Steve. In fact, he hasn't won a game since last August 24th for the Pirates. Well, you know how effective he's going to be early if he gets ground balls early. If not, Cubs will score early. Mark Rodzelanek gets a fly ball to left center field. Lofton on the run, still going back on the warning track, and he hauls it in. Oh, baby, did that ball carry toward the bullpen. Great catch by Lofton, and there's a long fly out here in the first. Kip Wells is pretty lucky that it's awfully deep to left center field. Kenny Lofton goes back, measures this one, knows he's got about one step to spare, and he hauls it in with a basket catch. Grezelanek hit that ball awfully hard. Here's Alex Gonzalez. He's hitting 353. In fact, the top six hitters in the Cub lineup tonight are all over the 300 mark so far this season. And that one chopped toward short. There is Nunez deep in the hole at short. Long throw, and Simon scoops it up. Good play. Two out. You're not going to see Randall Simon make a whole lot of good defensive plays, but he made one there. Nunez doesn't have an overpowering arm. He didn't have a chance to set his feet, but it turns into a pretty good play. So the Cubs have hit the ball well twice, but the Pirate defense has been equal to the task. Good effort by Simon at first, who was back after that car accident, and apparently his neck is fine. Sammy Sosa's bat is fine. He's got an eight-game hitting streak for the Cubs. Four home runs, 16 batted in, one for five. In the series opener last night, he was thinking home run. Well, Wells has a curve and a slider. The curve is better than the slider. The fastball will top out at 97, although he prefers to pitch around 92 93 with that good hard sinker. It's really reminiscent of Matt Clement as far as the action of the baseball is concerned. Base is clear with two outs, and it's nothing in two. Nothing wrong with this fastball. That was the 97 mile an hour heat. Well, he knows to stay effective on Sammy. You want to keep that fastball upstairs. And so instead of a two seamer that sinks, he throws a four seamer that stays up and rides. The one rode off the glove of Jason Kendall. And I'm not sure, Chip, why you would give three signs with nobody on base, but that's what, that's what Kendall's been doing. Take a look in at Jason Kendall, and uh, there's the off-speed pitch. And Sammy pops it out of play to the right side, and will get another swing against. Kip Wells who faced the Cubs back in Chicago gave up just two runs three hits and six innings of work control has been a problem for him he's walked 13 men in 16 innings of work and that's a concern of Lloyd McClendon who you just saw in the dugout for the Pirates late swing and Sosa keeps the at bat alive here just a gorgeous day here in Pittsburgh 70 degree temperatures more of the same tomorrow we understand for Easter Sunday. Then it's back home to Chicago. We talked with Reggie Sanders before the game, and he's playing left field instead of his usual right. And he said the ball will carry to right field much better than it will carry to left. One ball, two strikes. Soft speed pitch, high fly ball, center field. Lofton broke in. Now gallops back. He's got room, and Wells has a one, two, three first. Good start for him. Mark Pryor to the mound in a scoreless first inning. Thank <laughs> you.
Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products, like the 250 horsepower Dodge Intrepid SXT, the restyled Stratus SXT, and the sporty Neon SXT. Plus, our best warranty. Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus, our best deals, like up to $3,000 cash allowance or 0% financing for 60 months on Intrepid and Stratus. Add it all up, it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Stupid bloody hey, bag. No, 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 I'm just but calling you. But we really want to show you something. Oh, what, what is it then? What is it? These aren't Pepsis. They're Pepsi Twists. You're a bunch of bloody magicians. Oh, we're not the Osbournes. You're not? We're the Osmonds. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock Shit! and roll. I drummed the kids turn into the husbands. Oh, they're there, dear. Like twists, Pepsi Twist and Diet Pepsi Twist. It's a twist on a great thing. When we designed the Nissan Altima, we put our foot down and came up with a thrilling Nissan engine, a class-leading oversized interior, and a breakthrough design. OK, maybe we overdid it. The 2003 Nissan Altima. Now, with a $239 per month lease. Kip Wells has a 1 2 3 first. Here come the battling Buckos, losers of five of their last six ball games. Lloyd McClendon has Kenny Lofton leading off. Jason Kendall hitting second. Former Cup Matt Stairs hitting in the number three spot. Ramos Ramirez, the cleanup man. Randall Simon back after missing last night's ball game. Sanders is in left. Makoviak makes his 23rd career start at second base tonight. Abraham Nunez is the shortstop, and Wells will bat ninth against Cub right hander Mark Pryor. Take a look at the Cubs' Pepsi defense and how they'll line up behind Pryor. It's Alou Patterson and Sosa left to right. Bellhorn, Gonzalez, Grozelanik, and the man you're looking at, he's Sop Choi at first. Damian Miller behind the plate. Mark Pryor on the hill. And the Cubs defense, although spotty at times earlier, is starting to play some pretty good baseball. And the key to beating the Pirates, because they don't have a whole lot of power, is keeping Lofton off base. He will occasionally bunt, and Choi had best move in at first. Mark had two throwing errors in his last start. I'm sure the Pirates are thinking about that as well. And it's popped right to Miller. There's a break. One pitch, one pop out. One man down. Prior two throwing errors in his last start. The Cubs pitchers have had trouble flashing the leather. This one sliced up the right side, and Pryor tries to barehand it, and pulls Karros off the bag. And this one got away, so it was not an artistic effort for Mark Pryor, but he's looking for a redeemer here today. And he's facing Jason Kendall, who has two hits and 13 tries against the Cubs staff so far this season. Mark fires over a quick strike. Kendall at 281, three home runs, eight batted in. He looks to have Steve a much better power year this season than last. He also has terrific speed, surprising speed for a catcher. Lined, fair, and fan interference. This is one of the few ballparks where. If you hit it down the line, the shortstop has to go out for the carom coming back to him. Now, that time, the fan grabbed it. Kendall would have made two bases anyway. But you saw Tim Sheeta go out and immediately say that it is a double. Kendall hits this ball awfully hard. No chance for Bellhorn. The ball is about six inches fair, and you see the Cub fan could have probably allowed that ball to stay in play. So Kendall's at second base. The kid threw the baseball back. He's allowed to stay in the ballpark for now, and Matt Stairs the hitter. Stairs got a start at first base last night. If you missed it, he made a great play defensively for the Pirates. He played a surprising first base tonight. He's in the outfield. He's a little more comfortable in right field, but he looked awfully good at first. Mark misses with ball two, two and zero. Oh is your count? That play we're talking about took place in the sixth inning with Hesop Choi at first. Corey Patterson pulled a bunt toward first. Stairs came charging in, made a 360 spin to force Choi at second base on what very well could have been two on with 
nobody out. He saved a run. Gave the Pirates hope until late in the game when the Cubs got three in the ninth to put it out of reach. If I'm Lloyd McClendon, I have to give him the 3 0 green light because you don't have a lot of power. Stairs is one of the guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark, so Fryer had best be careful with first base open. Very friendly porch in right here, 320 feet down the line. And two men are on with one out for Ramirez. The enigmatic young third baseman for the Pirates still hasn't gotten on track for the Pirate team and they need his offense desperately especially without Giles in their lineup. And he certainly has not gotten on track defensively he's made seven errors so far in the 16 games he's played. Damian Miller out with the signs defensively and Ramirez with a 228 batting average. He is also the ideal man for two grounded into a double play last night. He's done that three times this year to lead his ball club. Ground ball left side five to four to three and the inning is over. Pryor gets the double play ball that he needed and we've got a scoreless first here in Pittsburgh. started Club Tech with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So kids learn more than just what computers can do. They learn what they themselves can do. On the WB's Big Sunday, primetime starts early, two hours early, with Easy View Smallville and Everwood. Easy View makes it easy for you. The biggest shows on the biggest night. WB's Big Sunday. It all starts early with the WB's Easy View. It all starts Sunday at 4 on WGN. Scoreless game at the end of one inning of play. And Moise Salu will go to work against Kip Wells here in the second. He'll be followed by Hesop Choi and then Corey Patterson here in the second game of this three game Easter weekend series. That was a young man that caught that double off the bat of Jason Kendall. He showed good hands, if not poor judgment. Alu chops that ball foul past Wendell Kim. No balls and a strike. Cubs got a little help within the division today. Milwaukee beat Houston in 14 innings, three to two. Arizona beat the Cardinals four to three. Montreal beat the Reds 8-7 in game one of a doubleheader in San Juan. So ground to be gained in the divisional race. Yes, it's early, but Cubs are in first place right now by a game and a half over the Cardinals. Chance to make it two with a win tonight. One ball, one strike to Alou. And Wells missed inside. Moises, one of the guys in the lineup that's had some good swings against Kip Wells. Chop toward third. Ramirez has been a little lazy with his throws. That one on target, however. And it's four up and four men down for the Pirate pitcher. 
Aesop Choi, the young first baseman, coming up. Ramirez gives a little ground because he knows he's got some time. And he pours it across. This has not been a good Pirate defense. They are second last in the league in front of only the Cincinnati Reds. 20 Pittsburgh errors so far on the year. Here's Hesop Choi. Uh, if you missed last night's ball game, he had one of the best at bats of the year in the first inning against Chris Benson. He fought off pitch after pitch after pitch and then hit a line drive about 20 feet off the ground right to the 375 sign in right field that scored two runs. I think if Choi hit in this ballpark every day, he would put up some prodigious numbers. He can't hit the ball out in left center, although left center is probably the toughest part of the ballpark to hit a home run here in Pittsburgh. Two balls, one strike. Choi with six hits in his last four games, six walks, six RBIs. And for a very big man, excellent speed. He's been very nimble around the first base bag. I don't believe he's made an error yet. Well, he's made two. Can't even remember the ones he's made. He hasn't had seemingly a bad game over at first base. He's done a good job of going from first to third on just about every single when he's aboard. Fought that ball off and he'll swing again. Two balls, two strikes. Somewhat surprisingly, Pittsburgh has been better on the road than at home. They're six and three in nine road games, just two and five here at PNC Park. Two two. Ta ta. Good pitch. Two outs for Corey Patterson. And that's called the backdoor breaking ball. Looked like a curveball and. You start it over the right hand batter's box, it snaps over the corner. Choi gave up on it. Very good pitch by Wells. And he does have real good stuff. Corey made what he thought was the perfect bunt last night. Chip told you about the play that Stairs made. Over but low to Corey. One ball, no strikes. He sports a 308 early season average. Ground ball right side Randall Simon will win the race to the bag. Wells perfect through two. Sunday they're laying lumber in the Steel City. The Cubs must rise up and put down Pokey Reese and the Pirates in a game three matchup in Pittsburgh. Cubs Pirates. Sunday at 12:30 on WGN. WGN News Thursday. You've seen the warning stickers on gas pumps and owner's manuals. Don't use your cell phone while you're filling up. What's the real danger? Robin Baumgarten separates fact from fiction in Cellular Sparks. Thursday on WGN News at 9. Ooh, you're a naughty little boy, aren't you? Keep it up and I'm going to give you a spanking. I'll teach you the meaning of respect. You're not getting any of my butt legs. Do you hear me? No kisses for you. Not till you learn to obey me. Now, get down on all fours. <laughs> for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Has anyone seen Johnson? He called in again. Must really be sick. What do you got? Order Comcast Digital Cable with HBO for only $39.99 a month for three months. I heard they got to fly the grandmother in. You'll get multiple channels of award-winning HBO originals and movies when you order Comcast Digital Cable. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. So call today. Has anyone seen Miller? I told you she had a boyfriend. 
The Hyundai Tiburon, with America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you can be counted on, you win. Plenty of fans still striding across the Roberto Clemente Bridge here in downtown Pittsburgh. Pirates come up in the second inning with Randall Simon leading things off, and he never met a pitch he didn't like. You no, know, Randall has a nose to toe strike zone, but he has tremendous power. They list him at 240, and it looks like now that he's not using it, he's hitting with Tony Gwynn's body. No balls and a strike. And that one dances in for strike two. Well, he's only about 3,000 hits behind Tony Quinn. If he has that kind of career, he'll be doing okay. Breaking ball right back where it came from. That almost took Mark's cap with it into center field. But with Brian Giles on the disabled list, Randall Simon becomes a key factor in this lineup. Because he gives him some balance, and from the left side, he can really hit. This is a hanging curveball, and fortunately, Pryor was able to get down under it. And that's why they missed Simon last night. Reggie Sanders, the hitter. Pirates of late have been having more team meetings than the UN Security Council. They had a players only meeting after the game last night. Pittsburgh at 8 and 8 on the year. Some of their performers feel like they're underperforming. It was a very vocal, very pointed meeting. And Lloyd McClendon was very happy to see them meet. He said it shows they're mad. They have not been playing well, losing five of their last six games. And with Wells throwing the way he is tonight, looks like the Pirates are at the top of their game at the moment. I don't think you want to throw too many fastballs away from Sanders. You go away with the breaking ball, but he won't be able to catch up to the fastball in on his hands. Reggie had a couple of hits last night. Including his first home run in two weeks. He's got five of those and now he's down one ball two strikes. Not much doubt about this one. Matt Clement. Had real good stuff last night. And Reggie Sanders got the Pirates a little closer, but too little, too late. So Mark's got him set up. One ball, two strikes. Simon not blessed with great speed over at first base. Rolled foul pass third. Well, right now, Mark is hanging a few of his breaking pitches and with visibility limited as it is at dusk the easiest ball to catch up with is a spinning breaking ball it's a real good time for a high tight fastball he's ahead one and two just keep it barely out of the strike zone you can throw it by him but Damian wants it away scoreless game here in our second inning and he hit the glove didn't get the call two and two like Jeff Nelson is a little tight on that outside corner. That was a pretty good pitch. See where Miller wants it. Well, if it had been a slider, I'm sure Jeff Nelson would have called that strike <laughs> three. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out to Sanders here. And he will stay alive. Well, Reggie these days has what you might call a slider speed bat in that if you make a mistake with the breaking ball he's able to hook it down the line in left field. He did that once last night also. A little roller to the left side Bellhorn to second for one that's all the Cubs will get. Simon is forced Sanders at first with one away from a Kobiak. Last night the Pirates showed that in base running situations with Lofton and Sanders on they would try to steal their way into a run because Lloyd McClendon knows that they're not going to hit too many home runs. This force out leaves Sanders at first base. Pryor's got to watch him very closely. 
Sanders can still run. Out of play, strike one to Makoviak. Pirates, 12 out of 13 as a team in steals, and Sanders has three. Line drive, base hit. Makoviak finally breaks out of a slide. Patterson. Has the ball cut off wisely. First and third, one out. Players getting hurt on the breaking ball early. As you see, it's not really breaking all that sharply yet. And he's throwing a few of them, and they're winding up line drives to the outfield. So that'll bring up Abraham Nunez. He's hitting a buck 88. Switch hitting infielder. Well, Wells is a pretty good hitter, so trying to play for a run early. You've got to watch the bunt. Mark Pellhorn in on the grass over at third. Choi holds the runner at first. One man out. No sign of a bunt. A quick strike. Little chopper, second base one, first base two, they turned it. What a double play, and banged up at second base is Mark Brunzelanek. Real hard slide, Makoviak. Mark was able to turn the inning ending double play, and we remain scoreless. We'll see if he's all right as the inning comes to a close. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Lots of people have a look, but only a few have the goods to back it up. Like Dodge Ram 1500 Quad Cab Hemi, featuring an available 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum with best-in-class towing capacity, four full-size doors, full-size bed, and more. Now with your choice of 0% APR financing for 60 months or $2,500 cash allowance. Plus Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Dodge Ram, bold looks, genuine goods, and now a sweet deal. This is my house. Mm. Mm. Dave's really getting hammered. Check it out. Ah. He didn't bring his A game today. Fall in. Let's go, baby. You can't check me. Come on, bring it, bring it. Oh. Foul, man, foul! Foul! There's fun for some, and there's fun for all. With Mega Millions, there's no limit to how high the jackpot could go. So play the Illinois Lottery. Players have more fun. Supercharged Nissan Xterra. If a Cubs player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN TV. You could win two round trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Two double plays in as many innings for the Cub defensive lineup. So to the third we go, still scoreless. Mark Grunzelanek hobbling around. He got Shin to shin contact from Makoviak, and we'll show you the play in a second. Swing and a miss by Bellhorn as we head to the third. Makoviak went in hard at second base, and it looked like he might have leg whipped him actually as he was sliding. So hopefully, Mark is okay. He's off to such a great start at the top of this offense. And you'd hate to see him go out for any length of time, and he stayed right in there and made a good pivot. I think we were all expecting Bellhorn to come home on this play. I know I was, and Mark decides he can get two. The throw is high, and unfortunately, Grezzolana can't defend himself because he gets the ball moving into the runner. But they get the double play, a terrific play by Grezzolana. 
Bellhorn ground ball to the hole at short. Nunez off balance try. And it'll be an infield hit first of the game for the Cubs. They had a radical shift on and he foiled the strategy. And there's your first Cub base runner of the night. Mark started to really turn it on in the last homestand and he gets the first base hit after being held hitless until his last at bat last night. This is a real good hit and run situation. You want to stay out of two and Mark Pryor can really hit behind Miller and Dusty has shown that he will hit and run in this situation. So Miller digging in. And he takes a belt high strike. Damian at 255 on the season, three homers and nine runs battered in. Somewhat surprising. Wells, who has had all kinds of control problems in the early going, has gotten everything over the plate tonight. Well, finally they got him in the stretch. Let's see if that alters his command. It did with that pitch. One ball, one strike to the Cub catcher. Well, it's a good size right hander at 6'3, 205 out of Houston, Texas. Last year, 12 and 14 with a sparkling 358 ERA. He seems to be getting a whole lot better as he gets older. And he's hoping to have a much more consistent season for the Pirates this year. He started the year 8 and 2 for them. Then in his last 13 starts, dropped 8 of 10 decisions. But he's a good one. They gave up Todd Ritchie for Wells and two others. And Damian down on strikes for out number one. Second punch out for Kip Wells tonight and Mark Pryor to the plate. Dusty elects not to run, and it's a good thing. That's a good curveball. It dips low and away, and Damian Miller. Misses that one by plenty. Good rotation, and again, the visibility is not particularly good right now. Very much to the pitcher's advantage. Pittsburgh, you want to get in as many innings as you can when you have this kind of sky. Pryor shows punt, lays it down foul, and that is a quick strike. Steve, we want to send along uh, best wishes to Coach John McDougal. Watching our game tonight in Oswego, Illinois, former basketball coach at Northern Illinois University, member of the Illinois Basketball Hall of Fame. He's back home after some surgery. And Coach McDougal, your friends are thinking about you, including David Kaplan, who finally has gotten on the come bandwagon. And uh, he says, now that you've finally switched allegiances from the Cardinals to the Cubs, we wish you all the best. So, John McDougal, hope you're feeling better tonight. And uh, look at that play. Well, the ball's alive. Look at that play. Simon was charging. Wells stepped off to throw to first, and he throws the ball into right field. Well, it, it could be construed a balk because he was throwing to an unoccupied base. Well, watch Simon charge. Nobody's at first. Wells throws it away, but even if it is a balk, you can run on it. Goes as an air on Wells. Got to get coordination between. The first baseman and the pitcher, they don't do it. And had Bellhorn continued on, he might have been able to make it to third. So let's see what Pryor has in mind here with one strike and a runner at second now. He was thinking home run, nothing in two. Well, the word about Mark Pryor is out, and Wells threw him a good, hard, high slider. I know that Pryor's a pretty good hitter. And I'm kind of surprised that Sanders is in as shallow as he is in left field. Rutzelanek waiting on deck. And Mark saw it off. Wells looks the runner back. And the throw to first in plenty of time for out number two. Let's see how Mark fares at the plate. Remember, shin to shin contact. He's still hobbling around a bit here in this third inning. Sanders has the best arm in the outfield. He was born and raised a right fielder. In this ballpark, because there's much more room in left field, he shifts over there, leaving Matt Stairs in right, who doesn't have the best arm in the world. 
Rudzelanek flirted with a home run his first time up. Sent Kenny Lofton to the warning track and a half step shy of the wall. And Lofton made a terrific over the shoulder catch for the first out of this ball game. One ball, no strikes. Scoreless game. Top of the third. Good pitching matchup. Wells and Pryor. Field straight away, not overly deep, and pretty much straight up in the infield. Two balls, no strikes, good hitters count. And now it's ball three. White Sox starting to turn it on Stoney. They beat the Indians 12 to 3 today. The Sox got 16 hits. Carlos Lee, a home run, four RBIs for the Southsiders. They're now 11 and 6. They're a pretty good team. They will have to turn it on to catch Kansas City, but eventually they will. Kansas City's Raul Ibanez continues to hit just about everything, and along with Mike Sweeney and Ken Harvey, a surprising young DH. They're doing a whole lot of hitting. Three and one, your count. Ground ball to the left side. Ramirez makes the pickup. The throw to first, right on the money. No runs, one hit, one air, one left. We are still scoreless in Pittsburgh. All right, where is it? Where's what? The six foot sub I bought for the party. I go get the Bud Light and now it's gone. Where is it? I didn't touch your six foot sub. Well then, who did? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Down, boy. Down. Make it a Bud Light. Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products, like Dodge Durango with Magnum BA Power Standard and best-in-class available towing and torque. Plus our best warranty. Dodge's fully transferable 770 Powertrain Limited Warranty. Plus our best deals, like a $4,500 cash allowance or 0% financing for 60 months. Add it all up, it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Dave. Larry. How is that uh, Dell Consolidation going? TCO's down. Uptime? Highly available. Great. And you? Well, you know, we're uh, still running a proprietary Unix-based system. Right. Yeah. A Dell Flexible solution with Dell PowerEd servers and Intel Xeon processors can help manage your enterprise for less. Easy as Dell. Call or go online today. Introducing a new level of performance from Acura, the all-new TSX. Kip Wells takes a strike as Mark Pryor goes to work in this third inning. Cub defense very strong behind him. Two around the horn double plays in as many innings has helped keep this game knotted at nothing. Wells, a lot like Pryor, swings the bat. Awfully well. So you have to make some good pitches to him. Pirates figure with Wells and Benson. They've got a pretty good one two punch at the top of their pitching rotation. And Pryor has his first strikeout with Kenny Lofton coming up. They like their bullpen a lot. It's been very effective for them this year. Mike Williams, as good as they come in the ninth inning. At least statistically speaking. They're looking for some offensive help and a little more depth in the starting rotation. Well, the Pirates fourth in the league in pitching. The Cubs second in the league behind only Montreal. 
Montreal trying to sweep a day night doubleheader from the beleaguered Cincinnati. They beat them 8 7 in the first game and they're winning 3 0 in game two of that day night affair down at Hiram Bithorn Stadium. That's a long day, a day night doubleheader. One ball, one strike to Kenny Lofton, who tried to bunt his first time up and popped it right to Damian Miller standing behind home plate. Good fastball and Mark Pryor, one of the few young right handers that can consistently throw the fastball inside the left hand hitters. This is a terrific pitch. And when Damian Miller puts the glove there and Pryor almost reaches out and hands it to him in the exact same spot. You know he's got pretty good control and that time he just tried to knock the seven off his back. Lofton didn't like that too much. This is a good way to make that outside corner look much further away than it really is. I'll give Lofton credit he's right on top of the plate but he wears no armor. Back up the middle Alex gets the big hop. At breakfast this morning with the Cubs general manager Jim Hendry. Who's really done a terrific job putting this team together and Bob Borwald is watching it was that wonderful thousand dollar brunch that they have at the hotel. So don't be surprised when the expense accounts come in. But Jim is very excited about what the offense has done. He pretty much figured that the pitching staff would look pretty good. He's been right on target with that. Here's Kendall. He doubled into left field last time up. A little fan interference helped out matters. And Kendall hits with a split grip. Not many guys will do that. What does that do for a hitter? I'm not sure if it really helps him. Kendall obviously thinks it does, Chip, but if you look at his hands, there's maybe about a half an inch of space between the top hand and bottom hand. I think sometimes hitters feel they have better control like that and they make more contact. But most hitters will tell you that they might not generate quite as much power. Now, Kendall doesn't view himself a power hitter. He hit only three home runs last year, but he does have three already. There's another line drive. Corey Patterson will cut it off. He plays it very effectively, and Kendall's two for two. That's the beauty of Kendall hitting in the number two spot. He doesn't strike out. He can use all fields, and he's a perfect complement with Lofton speed at one and two. And you see the split grip. Kendall has hit the ball hard twice. Patterson makes a good play because this could have easily gotten by him. We've talked about very few ideal number one hitters anymore. High fly ball by stairs into left. In comes Alu. And the third inning is in the books. We're zipping right along. Scoreless game. Good pitching tonight at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Detroit was last night. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines with fun fares as low as $49 each way. You are now free to move about the country. Sir William Lyons, founder of Jaguar, once said, the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Hyundai. When your car comes home with America's best warranty, you win Hyundai. Walgreens Pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs and by Acura experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. I'm Robert Jordan coming up tonight on WGN News a young boy was hit and killed by a train today in Lake Forest. He and his friends were playing near the track. See the full story at nine. 
when four of the world's most fiendish villains join forces. Holy nightmare! We haven't one moment to lose! Only Batman and Robin can possibly stop them. Greatest criminal coup anyone ever dreamed of! Now the world's fate is in the dynamic duo's hands. Batman! Tonight at 1030 on WGN. Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it on Bud Light. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, our entire WGN crew from PNC Park in Pittsburgh. We've completed three already. A scoreless game with the Cubs second, third, and fourth hitters coming up. That means Gonzalez, Sosa, and Alou, and a check swing rocket into the seats. Real good crowd tonight. On this uh, Easter Saturday, fireworks this evening, kids opening day tomorrow, but Steve, the Pirates have to be very concerned about a big drop in attendance. They're down about 11,000 a game from their inaugural season here in PNC. Chip, there was a real interesting editorial today by Mark Madden. And that was in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette where he said that this plain and simply is not a baseball town. They've always loved their football here. And they probably always will, but it is crowded tonight. And one of the things he talked about was the vote they had and the citizens of this football crazy city turned down the baseball park. But the politicians decided to build it anyway. No it balls is, it is a beautiful park. To Gonzalez. What was most surprising to me was. The comment that Madden said they should never have built this stadium they'd have been better off building a hockey rink for the Penguins and that baseball is no longer the big ticket in town and really hasn't been for a long time. You've got the Steelers you've got Pitt and then everything else a few notches <laughs> below. Well, this is the second time through the lineup and I think they should at this point see how the fastball is moving from Wells. How much his curveball breaks, and the fact that he throws very few changeups. Cubs only one hit so far. I've had a Bellhorn infield single leading off the third inning. And Alex continues his fight here in the fourth. It chips somewhere along the line. These young pirates are going to have to capture the fancy of these fans, and I'm not sure at the low budget they have if they're going to be able to do it. Although they play real hard, they just don't have a whole lot of offense. One ball, two strikes. Lined into center field. Lofton has a play, however. And that's the sad thing. You'd love to see a team like the Pirates be rewarded with good crowds for the style of play they have. But you mentioned from your playing days on the south side, you'd prefer almost that they err on the side of offense because at least the games would be Maybe not from a purist standpoint, but certainly from an entertainment standpoint, more entertaining winning eight six slugfests. Well, Kendall's the one guy that they decided to build around along with Giles, and they thought that that was their future. They paid a lot of money for those two guys, and unfortunately for them, Giles has been hurt on the disabled list after a slide at second base. They're hoping that he comes back in a month in his place. Jason Kendall's going to have to help pick up the slack. Sosa cue ball shot he's quickly down two strikes and Wells very very impressive again tonight at home. Wells has never lost to the Cubs in his brief major league career through a four hitter at the Cubs here last May. And Sammy did he go no he didn't might have gotten a break one ball two strikes. Alfonso Marquez allows Sammy to stay up there and look at another pitch. This is a good hard slider and Sammy might have caught a break there. Let's see if he can take advantage of it and score the first run of this night. Rolled to the shortstop Nunez in up and across. The chip alluded to the trade with the White Sox. Back on December 13th of 2001, Kip Wells came along with Josh Fogg and Sean Lowe 
in a deal for Todd Ritchie and minor league catcher Lee Evans. Lee Evans better be real good. So far the Pirates have gotten the best of this deal. Todd Ritchie a veteran pitcher was a guy Kenny Williams wanted and he thought he could stabilize a very young rotation. Meantime Fogg and Wells have done a great job here in Pittsburgh. Although backs away from ball one. He grounded out to third his first time up. Good pitching gets out good hitting so says the baseball adage and that's been very true on this night. Wells at the top of his game and prior throwing well for the Cubs. Well, on a very talented staff, we saw Chris Benson last night. There's a lot of guys out of that bullpen that throw exceedingly well. But to a man, every one of them will tell you that Kip Wells has the best stuff. They hesitate to call him the best pitcher at this point. And he hit him. Moises couldn't get out of the way, so there's a two out break. That'll bring up Choi. And Alu will limp to first. Well, sometimes you wonder if that is a very subtle message sent after the high tight fastball to Kenny Lofton. He hit him in the knee. Not a real good place to catch a fastball. And Moises, with a smile on his face, says he's okay. He has very strong knees. Let's hope so. And the best way to make a pitcher pay for that is to try to steal a base and get yourself in scoring position and the Cubs don't have a whole lot of base runners. One of the guys who is a good base runner with not overwhelming speed is Moises Alou who's two for two in stolen bases. Decent sized lead over at first not exorbitant by any stretch. And to the stretch goes Wells and he stopped. Could not check his swing. Take another look at it. Tim Sheeta said that he went far enough. Cubs would love a two out gapper here. No balls and a strike to Choi. And that missed the corner. The Mets' problems continued today. Florida came back to beat him six to five. Benitez blew his fourth save of the season already. And that Met team can ill afford to give away any leads as they've had a whole lot of injuries. One ball, one strike. That pops away from Kendall. No advance. Well, Moise is unhappy with himself. You couldn't pick up the ball there because it got by Kendall and it wasn't really in the dirt. It's hard to see it. You see it hit the glove and then as it rolls away Moises can't pick it up. Now if you're thinking about running the 2 1 pitch is a good pitch to run because you might guess breaking ball and it's the toughest ball for a catcher to catch and throw to second. Two balls and a strike he's not going and it's ball three. Two, he stopped Choi. He did get the breaking ball, but Alou didn't move. Well, Chip, there is a Florida watch around Major League Baseball, and that is if Florida, who is just one game under 500, continues to lose, how long before they decide to unload Mike Lowell, who's a wonderfully talented third baseman? Well, they're nine and ten right now with their win today. Three and one, line drive over short. That will split the gap. Lofton can't cut it off. Alou around second on his way to third. He'll the green light. Here comes the relay. It won't be made. A big two out hit from Choi and the Cubs lead by a run. Sore knee and all. Alou scores from first on Hesop Choi's 11th RBI of the year. Well, once again, Lloyd McClendon might have guessed wrong. You play five foot nine, Abraham Nunez. If you played six foot one Jack Wilson, he might have caught this ball. A rocket over the head of Nunez, who goes up as high as he can go. Lofton doing everything he can, but Moises Salu running well. Choi drives in run number 11. 
most important thing the Cubs have a one to nothing lead so it's just a case of playing them too short that's right they had the low Nunez in when they needed high Nunez <laughs> here's <laughs> Patterson he rolled out to first one nothing Cubs have the lead nothing picks up your club like a big two out hit that's the only kind choice seems to have he should he's six six and he is having a great first month of it. No balls and a strike to Corey Patterson. That's finally breakthrough against Wells, who hit Alu with a pitch with two outs. And that makes a big Cub fan, Christopher Lecklum, happy watching the game down in Winter Park, Florida tonight. Budding catcher. And Winter Park's Little League program down there. Send along best wishes to my friend, Dr. Jerry Becker, his wife, June, having a Passover Seder tonight. What do you wear to a seat? Well, depending on how the weather is. I just told my girlfriend Lisa you wear the big hat. Right. And you carry a gigantic stick. Because if you saw Charlton Heston <laughs> as he parted the waters, <laughs> that's, that's approximately what you have to do to get in the spirit of things. So hopefully she'll be able to do that. One ball, two strikes. Ooh, didn't miss by much. It's two and two. You heard of speak softly and carry a big stick? Yes. Well, there's an example of it. That's where it came from originally. That's the kind of inside information you don't <laughs> get on most baseball broadcasts. Deuces are wild for Corey. And the inning is over. Boy, a hit batsman looms very, very large in this game so far. Choi's two out double gives the Cubs a 1 0 lead. Now, during the National Caravan event, get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Caravan, the best selling minivan ever, with available power sliding doors and power rear hatch. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deals, put 750 down and we'll match it. Plus get up to $3,500 cash allowance for a total down payment of up to five grand. Add it all up, it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Sierra Mist. Taste one shockingly refreshing lemon lime. I gotta get me a dog like that. Has anyone seen Johnson? He called in again. Must really be sick. What he got? Order Comcast Digital Cable with HBO for only $39.99 a month for three months. I heard they gotta fly the grandmother in. You'll get multiple channels of award-winning HBO originals and movies when you order Comcast Digital Cable. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. So call today. Has anyone seen Miller? Boy, you sure got stuff. Where do you put it all? Show you a new Murano at 32536. We've got nothing to hide. You might, of course. Nissan Murano. Aesop Choi has the game's lone RBI. A two out rocket over Nunez's head at short that scored Alou in the fourth inning. And now Mark Pryor to work into the middle of the Pirate order with a 1 0 lead. Ramirez, Simon, and Sanders are coming up. Well, you'd certainly like to retire Ramirez to lead off a fourth inning because Randall Simon is probably the best hitter in this lineup tonight, and he's in the on deck circle. One thing about Pryor, Steve, and what I think sets him apart from other young starters from my perspective is he doesn't show hitters everything in his arsenal the first time through the order. Chris Benson seemingly did that for the Pirates last night. 
Well, another factor, Chip. He'll pitch down, 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 and then go up by design. Most young pitchers have no idea about elevation. They just work in and out. There's a look at Chris Benson, who, after the first inning last night, threw a brilliant game. And that's not at all a knock on Benson. Don't misunderstand me, but just two very different styles of the procedure on that mound. Well, what makes Pryor special is his command of the strike zone up and down, in and out. Look out. Into the tenth row of seats behind the Cub dugout. Everybody looks to be okay. Hey, the kid made a great catch. Put him at third base. Well, if Ramirez keeps on playing like he is, then that's a distinct possibility. Two two. Popped him up. Who wants it? It'll be Miller. In fair ground, one man down. Pryor's got the lead. Randall Simon to hit before Mark faces him. Let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN TV, Chicago's WB. With Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at PNC Park, the house that Honus Wagner did not build, but he is. Commemorated outside a beautiful bronze statue for the Flying Dutchman, one of the game's great players a century ago. And it is beautiful when you look at the Pittsburgh skyline and the Roberto Clemente Bridge. And we are perched high atop this ballpark. There's a good look at downtown Pittsburgh. These folks should be proud of this place. It's Magnificent. Little ground ball to second. Zelanek picks it up. He makes the play. Honus Wagner in the early 1900s. Seven batting titles from 1900 to 1909. That's a pretty good stretch. Wow. That probably earned him a six eight dollar raise. <laughs> good old number 33. There's and the if you have an original baseball card. With Hannes Wagner on it, you're doing okay. It's worth a few bucks right now. Folks might forget the Pirates played in the first World Series back in 1903. Back then, it was a best of nine affair. And Reggie Sanders flies out to right. Mark Pryor has been given a one run lead, and he's starting to get into a groove. We head to the fifth inning. Cubs looking for more in Pittsburgh. Now the toughest leg of the strongman competition, Norm, the Bud Light Industrial Bridge Pole. Jim, that's 1,000 pounds of pure hernia that they'll try to drag across. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Norm, but it looks like a fan from the stands has stolen the Bud Light. Oh, a huge hit from out of nowhere. And this guy's got the foot speed to take this thing all the way. Oh, man. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Okay, who's the hero? Make it a Bud Light. Okay, let's say this is your car and you get into an accident. Oh boy. If you take it to an Allstate recommended repair shop, they'll fix it. So you're pretty happy. You're like, ooh, I'm pretty happy. Even better, Allstate guarantees the workmanship for as long as you own the car, which means if even the smallest thing goes wrong, you don't have to pay for it. So you're still happy. You're like, ooh, I'm still happy. So there you go, the Allstate lifetime repair guarantee. Call now and find out how you're in good hands with Allstate. Coach, I think you're going to love our improvements. After working hard to improve America's cars and trucks, Chevy went to work on America's favorite pastime. Maybe we'll just stick to what we do best. Now make your money count with 0% APR for 60 months on every 2003 Chevy SUV. Or get $3,000 cash back. Keep your visor down. Good luck. Go get them. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Chevy. The cars you depend on, the cars that last, will be there. The 4,000 CarQuest auto parts stores across North America. You'll find it at CarQuest. And by Honda. See your Honda dealer to learn more about the great value Honda has to offer. Ah, uh, nothing like a little cotton candy, and it looks to me like she's had a little too much at this tender young age. Doesn't have to worry about her teeth at all. She doesn't have any. 
She's getting ready for a new set, I think. It reminds me, of course, of my fine dentist in Chicago, Jack Ruby. He's not the best dentist in the world, but he's a great shot. Where's his office located? I dare you. No. One up that comes have the lead. Actually, in Oak Lawn, oh, it's nowhere okay. near the Kennedy. Okay, good. Just making sure. Oh, it's a little scary <laughs> when we're on the same line of thought. Three and zero to Bellhorn. Cubs would like a few more runs, although Mark Pryor is throwing pretty well here tonight, as is Kip Wells. And in games of this nature, off times. One mistake. One mistake is critical. Well, here's one that Bellhorn can lean on if he gets it middle in. Short porch in right field. And he's aboard with a leadoff walk here in our fifth inning. Let's look at tonight's Illinois Lottery. Fun fact if you looked at the National League statistics, you'd find, Steve, the Cubs number one in the National League in runs scored. And even more impressively to me, number one in walks, something that we all figured would have been a problem coming out of spring training. And I think it's it's a huge surprise that the Cubs have shown this kind of patience this early. Big cut and a miss by Damian Miller who struck out his first time up. Well, there are a lot of folks around baseball who are starting to jump on this Cubs bandwagon because of the pitching and because of the fast offensive start. There are also a lot of people who look back in the archives and see what Dusty Baker did in his first season with the Giants as their manager. A 31 game improvement from one year to the next. They won 103 games in 1993. Only Atlanta's magnificent 104 win season with the addition of Fred McGriff kept them out of the playoffs. When John Sherholtz acquired Fred McGriff, you might remember they went 51 and 17. And they caught Dusty in the stretch. And beat him by a game. A remarkable year. No balls and a strike. That's tipped and caught by and Kendall. I think it's unrealistic to assume that the Cubs can get 30 games better because that's how far they trailed St. Louis. But the Cubs can certainly get 18 to 20 games better. And St. Louis, if it comes back to the pack somewhat, along with Houston, this is going to be a great race in the Central. Oh, and two. And we've talked about it not that you wish any ill will to anybody else but sometimes it's just your year knock on wood the Cubs have not had any injury problems Lance Berkman's hurting with a bad knee for Houston Albert Pujols and Fernando Vina are banged up for the Cardinals who also have Isringhausen on the shelf in the bullpen the Reds we've talked about their problems with Griffey being hurt and the pitching woes. Miller advances Bellhorn good at bat for Damian and Mark Pryor comes up with a runner at second and one out. And how long do you figure Kurt Schilling is going to be out with that emergency appendectomy. Well that's an interesting story today it came across the wires Kurt Schilling flying to St. Louis with the Diamondbacks complained of some abdominal pain. The Diamondbacks said it wasn't really an emergency situation but they went and had it checked out and the Cardinals doctor said don't send him back to Phoenix it needs to come out now so they operated on him today and the early word is they think he might only miss one start which would be remarkable but they're already without Randy Johnson Kurt Schilling threw a brilliant game last time out the Diamondbacks off to a slow start did the Cubs a favor today by defeating St. Louis four to three Young Hung Kim getting his first win as a starter Despite being one and three, he's thrown awfully well. And Matt Manti picked up his first save in nearly two years. Most of his work out of the bullpen has resulted in wins because he hasn't been able to complete the save for Arizona. Well, the Mets have a Korean pitcher. A boy named Jay So, Jay so I think. Yes. So well with young Hung Kim doing well right he sub Choi doing well I mean they have certainly scouted the Pacific Rim very well and a lot of real good young players coming out of South Korea Chan Ho Park was uh, one of the first to come from that Asian country 
One ball, two strikes to Mark Pryor with Bell Horn at second and one out. And chop foul. And assuming that we can solve the difficulties with North Korea, they'll continue to come out of South Korea. Leon Lee, who once was the Cubs Pacific Rim coordinator, now is a, a coach over in Japan, responsible for scouting not just Hesop Choi, but Jay Cook Yu, a pitcher in the Cubs farm system. So like Latin America, the Pacific Rim continues to be a very fertile bed for baseball talent. And what's somewhat surprising, Chip, is how well schooled he Sop Choi is in all the aspects of the game. He's a terrific base runner. He's got good footwork at first. And he seems to make great adjustments at the plate. And for a young man, that's most unusual. 2-2. Two -two. And Pryor continues to battle his counterpart on the mound here. One of the things that Sammy Sosa said about him in spring training was that he hasn't seen a young guy able to adjust from at bat to at bat to what pitchers are trying to do to him. And after the first series, when everybody pounded him inside, along with Gary Matthews, who worked on it, they moved him back off the plate. And now, as you can see, he can hit the tar out of the ball to left center field, but he also pulls the ball very well. And think, too, as Pryor goes down, think about the cultural assimilation he's had to make. This is a young man who came to the United States, a very young, young adult. Had an interpreter for one year in the minor leagues. And after one season at A ball, Choi said, I don't want the interpreter anymore. If I'm going to make it, I need to learn English. I need to do this on my own. And the Cubs do not have an interpreter for Hesop Choi. Now, there is Korean media that follows the team and follows his exploits, but he's one of the guys and has been terrific. Top of the order now, Ronsalanic. Did not swing. One ball, no strikes. Rosalonic normally a tough man to strike out. And all you need here is a little contact. If Wells stays away in an RBI situation, Rosalonic can dump that ball into right center field with the best of them. One ball, one strike. Wells humping it up there at 95 to 97 miles an hour. There's nothing wrong with his fastball. And when he throws a four seamer, which is the riding fastball that he keeps up in the strike zone, it does top out at 97 fairly consistently. One ball, one strike. Bouncing ball up the middle. Nunez to his left, behind the bag. Fires the first in time to retire the side. Cubs got a leadoff walk, couldn't bring Bellhorn home. We're halfway through this ball game, and the Cubs enjoy a modest lead of one. Flying to Nashville? When you choose from any of Southwest Airlines' eight daily nonstops to Nashville, you can receive double credit by booking your flight on southwest.com. Get a free ticket after you fly just four round trips. You are now free to move about the country. To celebrate 100 years of automotive innovation, your local Ford store is offering 0% financing for 60 months or 3,000 cash back on some of America's favorite cars, trucks, and sport utilities. Taurus, Ranger, ZX2, Windstar, Explore, Expedition, Excursion, and F-150. Celebrate the century with zero for 60 or 3,000 cash back. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Can I have some napkins? Ketchup, please. Oh, no, please. Okay. And don't touch my chicken rings. Yeah, he's one of ours. Juicy, tender, golden chicken rings, only from White Castle. I saw that. Yeah. White Castle, what you crave.
the new 315 horsepower all-wheel drive Infiniti FX45. Rob Makoviak takes a strike as the Pirates come up here in the fifth inning. It's seven, eight, nine in the Pirate batting order for Mark Pryor, who has scattered four hits. Two double plays early in the game really helped Mark right the ship tonight. And the second one turned in spectacular fashion with Grozelanek staying in there to take the hit at second. They don't turn that double play a run scores and it's a one one game. Cubs tonight winning with pitching defense and timely hitting on an overwhelming attack. But still a ways to go tonight two balls two strikes to Chicago and Rob Makoviak. Every real good general manager has always told me the same thing about their second baseman. They want what they call a dirt ball, a real tough guy at second because he has to stand in and take the hits, and you have to get the throw off and make the key double play because it saves you games. And I think Mark Reslanik falls into that category. Remember Wally Backman, who wasn't an offensive wizard, but just stayed right in, and of course, they've got one. In the Hall of Fame here in Pittsburgh, Bill Mazeroski. Outside corner. Second strikeout for Mark Pryor. Good fastball over the outside corner. Miller wants it away. Mark Pryor just paints the outside corner. When you stay out there consistently and hit the catcher's glove, you're going to get the call. And a good catcher will put only the thumb of the glove over the plate. And give you a couple inches outside with the rest of the glove. If you hit it, it's a strike. Nunez wrapped into a double play his first time up. What's fun to watch about Pryor is Miller's glove doesn't move at all. I mean, it's they, they, he, he does literally lay the ball into the leather. Well, that's why he's fairly easy to catch despite having overwhelming stuff. Breaking ball, hammer to short. Alex, clean pickup. Two men out. Tuesday, May 6th, first 10,000 fans at Wrigley get a collectible scratch off card. You might win an authentic Rawlings autographed baseball signed by Mark Pryor. This uh, giveaway courtesy of Verizon Wireless, and there's no purchase necessary for complete rules. Visit Wrigley or the Cubs website at Cubs.com. The Milwaukee Brewers will be in at 7.05, and there are good tickets still available. Well, you want to get Wells out, turn it over to the offense. It's 2 3 4 in the sixth inning. And for the first time, the hitters are seeing the ball real well because darkness has overtaken Pittsburgh. Swing and a miss by Wells. We were talking to Moise Salou before the start of the series and said sometimes you do get kind of a glare and a reflection off these buildings at the ballpark in that hitter's background in center field. Yeah, but the second or third inning on a bright, sunny day, he said, Hitting is tough early. And then you get to see the ball a whole lot better. And he saw the ball plunk him in the knee in the fourth, but he scored the only run. A ball and two strikes to the Pirate pitcher, Kip Wells. A win tonight gives the Cubs the series already. It would be their fifth. Out of six played, and Pryor is starting to groove. He struck out three. He's retired seven straight, and the big boppers are coming up, trying to add to a one-run lead. Ooh, you're a naughty little boy, aren't you? Keep it up, and I'm going to give you a spanking. I'll teach you the meaning of respect. You're not getting any of my butt legs. Do you hear me? No kisses for you. Not till you learn to obey me. Now, get down on all fours. <laughs> For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. When wide track handling and a great offer, send your mind racing. It's performance season. Now with Smart Buy Financing, get a 2003 Grand Prix SE for around $229 a month. Call for details or choose $4,000 total cash back. See your Chicagoland Pontiac dealer. 
New from FP Mailing Solutions, it's My Mail, the easiest postage meter system available. Tired of guessing weights and wasting stamps on your letters and packages? My Mail solves all of your problems and is easy to use. You can save up to 20% by printing exact postage. Increase efficiency with automated postage download through your phone line all for less than $20 a month. Order My Mail at 800 956 6465 or at fpmymail.com. FP Mailing Solutions, we push the envelope so you don't have to. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Ah, Stoney, your favorite song, the Pennsylvania Polka. As selected by our producer Pete Toma, also one of his favorites, as we look at our Budweiser fan camp. You know, I was born around the corner from Frankie Yankovic, the Polka King of not only Cleveland, but of many places. Here in, here in Pittsburgh, they have chip what they call Italian wedding soup. I haven't had it in 31 years. You never want to eat soup on the rebound, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> and the lovable pirate parrot wailing away on the pierogies. I do love pierogies, however. Now, if you had to choose, do you love pierogies or the parrot better? Pierogies or galumpies. Have you ever had good Polish food? Didn't know there was such a thing as Gonzalez goes to work. Oh, in the yes, city. indeed. Breaking ball, a uh, quick strike. As a teammate of Bill Naharadny with the White Sox, invited us for a fine Polish dinner in Hamtramck, Michigan. Just digested it a couple of days ago. It was in 1973. Send your cards and letters <laughs> regarding Polish cuisine. No, it too. is it is a little heavy. I mean, it's delicious, but it's very and nutritious, heavy. I'm sure. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's see if Gonzalez Sosa and Alou can pad this one nothing lead. And I would think they'd get much better swings at Kip Wells, who's been just wonderful, as has Mark Pryor. This is a whale of a pitcher's duel. Just six hits, and the hit batsman and the two out double by Choi plates the first and only run of the game so far. We want to wish all of you a very happy Passover. Happy Easter. Easter's right around the corner. And my dogs are celebrating in Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to get some pictures of them tomorrow in their Easter best. Now, you have two greyhounds, right? I do indeed, and a you're Ridgeback. Not, you're not going to give them a rabbit. That would not be fair. No, but you'll see. We've got something up our collective sleeves. Two balls, two strikes to Alex Gonzalez. Sosa waiting on deck. We're already in our sixth inning tonight. One man down. Now, it's been a while, Stoney, since you've been with us full time here on WGN, but let's harken back to 1998. Ah, those were the days. Well, I remember that. And I still have that shirt. That was. I was just rounding into shape. That was my 61st birthday. And you always have to celebrate that. Well, you had a happy birthday, but a bad moss day. Ooh, here's Sosa. He's over two. Nice perm. Good parent. <laughs> yeah. He died shortly thereafter. I didn't know I was working with Peter Brady that <laughs> night. Eight game hit streak for Sosa. Well, Wells has had terrific stuff tonight. The overhand curveball has been snapping on the outside corner. His fastball, he's thrown a couple of different ways, and both of them very lively. Big gap in left center. Uh, everybody remembers a monstrous home run Sammy hit here one year and one week ago a 484 foot blast off Dave Williams that landed out past the flagpole 
in left center field. He loved to touch one up here. One and two. Off the end of his bat into right center. Lofton calls off stairs. Two out. Moise Salou has scored the only run in this game. He was hit by a pitch, came home on a Choi double. Ball, no strikes to Alu, hitting 322 at the moment. And we talked about it with Wells at the start of our telecast tonight. He's pitched a whole lot better than his record the last season and one third would indicate. Pirates giving him barely two runs of support. In fact, they were shut out three times in the second half of the year last year when he went two and eight. Well, when you run into Mark Pryor having a good night, that's going to happen to you on occasion. And there's been nothing wrong with the Pittsburgh pitching staff. They have a very good bullpen. They have three quality left-handers down there. They got Mike Williams at the end, who is one of the real good closers in all of baseball. There's a look at Mike. Chip, when you look at the great closers, and I'm thinking the 85 to 90 percent success rate, there's only six or seven of those in the entire game these days. That's why they are paid the big bucks. And that's also one of the reasons why a lot of people who decided that they were going to bury the Atlanta Braves early, despite 11 straight division championships, have to realize that Philadelphia is a lot better. But Jose Mesa is not John Smoltz, and here comes Atlanta. Although they're losing tonight 4 0 in the fifth, they also lost Javi Lopez. That pops away from Kendall, and uh, Jason will make the throw to first, and that will retire the side. Six strikeouts for Kip Wells tonight, and the top of the Pittsburgh order is coming up in a 1 0 game in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Coach, I think you're going to love our improvements. After working hard to improve America's cars and trucks, Chevy went to work on America's favorite pastime. Maybe we'll just stick to what we do best. Now make your money count with 0% APR for 60 months on every 2003 Chevy car. Or get $3,000 cash back on every Chevy car except Corvette. Keep your visor down. Good luck. Go get them. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. Good night. That's fun for some. Playing Mega Millions from the Illinois Lottery? That's fun for all. Players have more fun. Nissan came up with some great ways to move you. The Nissan Sentra has a powerful engine, an available 180-watt seven-speaker stereo, and an eight-way adjustable driver's seat. Now get 0.9 financing or 1,500 cash back on all new 2003 Nissan Sentras, only at your Nissan dealer. It's your move. Nothing beats the fun and excitement of watching the Cubs in beautiful Wrigley Field. And you can be there. That's right, tickets are still available for upcoming Cubs games. To get your tickets, just call tickets.com at 1-800-THE-CUBS. Head to the Wrigley Field box office. Punch in www.cubs.com. Or visit any Chicagoland Sears or Sears hardware store. Don't wait, catch all the Cubs action firsthand and get to the game. Sixth inning, Kenny Lofton goes to work for the Pirates. And uh, Steve, Mark Pryor has been a model of strike one consistency tonight. 16 of 19 
first pitch strikes and that's the way you set up a real good at bat. Lofton has yet to get the ball out of the infield and Pryor keeps firing that ball over the inside corner and Lofton doesn't like that too much. Well, he stands right on top of the plate and he just as soon get his arms out and take it right back up the middle. But if you keep on pushing him back then you can drop the ball on the outside corner and he has some problems reaching it. Cubs by a run. That came in the fourth inning and Pryor's made it stand up. Well to set up this inning and to get yourself out of a lot of difficulty you'd certainly love to retire Lofton who is their speed burner at the top. Ground ball toward he He'll pick it up cleanly. Lofton 0 for 3 and 0 for 6 in the series. He doesn't get on the Pirates again bereft of much power without Giles. It's tough for them to steal hit and run and create much offense. He's the spark. Well it's no coincidence that since Brian Giles got hurt this team has gone straight down and they were flying high early in the season. But Giles is the heart and soul of this offense and with the short porch in right field he is truly missed. Kendall has two of the four Pittsburgh hits he's singled he's doubled but he's been stranded twice. And if I'm Dave Littlefield the vice president and general manager of this team I tell the scouts get me lefties because it's tough to hit home runs if you're a right hand hitter in this ballpark. Three eighty nine to left center four ten to that triangle in deep left center but only three seventy five to the power alley in right center. Everyone promotes the home run frequency at Cincinnati Houston to a certain degree this park but really in all of them you can pitch to two of the three fields in the outfield. But if you make a mistake more often than not you're going to get hard hit hard in Houston it's the short porch in left field in Cincinnati it's the wind tunnel in left center here it's the short right field fence. Two and two to Kendall and a line drive again to left center field. Kalu cut it off. He will. Kendall around first on his way to second. Throw close, but not in time. Kendall has his second double of the night and a time running scoring position with one out. Coming into this ball game in four at bats, Jason Kendall had never had a hit against Mark Pryor. He's changed all that tonight. This fastball on the outer third of the plate instead of the corner. And Kendall, with good speed in the play in front of him, decides to run on the arm of Moises Salou. Kendall with surprising speed for a catcher, and he's thinking two bases when he leaves the batter's box. And good lesson for all you young players. A lot of guys in this league now take singles for granted. Kendall hustled when he realized that Moises Alou had waited back some, had to cut that ball off in the alley. He took two, and he made it rather easily. And the importance, obviously, if Stairs gets a hit, they've got a chance to tie the game. And that looks at an outside corner strike. He's walked, he's fly to left. Five pirate hits. Breyer will try to strand the fourth Pittsburgh runner of the night here in the sixth inning. And a ground ball to the right side. Choi gives ground. Pryor does his job. Runner to third. Two men down. Good play by Pryor in that you know with a man at second, although he's behind you, as soon as you catch the ball from the first baseman, you have to take two steps and spin around to see if the guy's going. And watch Pryor getting over quickly. He understands this game very well and then he takes his two steps turns back toward the infield and makes sure that Kendall can't advance. Now what you have to be aware of is that slider in the dirt. Damian Miller has got to block anything down. Because that's one of the ways to retire Ramirez. Ramirez really fighting it just a 220 batting average 0 for 2 in the game tonight. Ball one high with Randall Simon waiting next. If I'm Ramirez, I got to think I'm going to get a good pitch here because there is no way 
but Mark Pryor wants to face Randall Simon. The count even now at a ball and a strike. Montreal with a 6 0 lead over Cincinnati in game two of that doubleheader. Boy, the Reds have enormous problems. They lost game one, 8 7 down in San Juan. That pitching staff, Chip, coming into today's action, had a stamp ERA of 662. Williamson gave it up in game one. And one more strike, and the Cubs will head to the seventh inning with a lead. Well, here's where the breaking ball usually winds up low and away. The end result would be the strikeout of Ramirez. But the tying run is just 90 feet away. And Kendall is pretty quick. One ball, two strikes. Damien sets up outside and it's ripped back to the screen. He had a good cut at that pitch. Well, even though it was 96, it was up a little bit higher than Mark wanted. And fortunately, Ramirez swung through it and fouled it straight back. When a hitter fouls a ball straight back, it usually means he's got the speed judged real well. He just got under it a touch, and you better make an adjustment on the mound. So Dusty looking out, knowing this could be one of the biggest pitches of the ball game for Pryor and the Cubs. Kendall 90 feet away, a 1-2 count to Ramirez. And he pulled it right past him. Inning over. Boy, that kid is something. Kendall left stranded at third base, and the Cubs still lead by one. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Chicago Cubs. Now you can save even bigger at your Lincoln Mercury dealers Think Big Sales event. Now for a limited time with 0% financing for 60 months or up to $5,000 cash back on every new 2003 Lincoln and Mercury, including Mountaineer, Navigator, and Lincoln's newest luxury SUV, Lincoln Aviator. Now get 0% APR financing for 60 months on every 2003 Lincoln Mercury or $3,000 cash back on Lincoln Mercury SUVs. Hurry, the Think Big event ends soon. See your local Lincoln Mercury dealer now. Stupid bloody hey, Dad. bag. No, 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 I'm just but a kind really of... really want to show you something. Oh, well, what is it then? What is it? These aren't Pepsis. They're Pepsi twists. You're a bunch of bloody magicians. Oh, we're not the Osborns. You're not? We're the Osmonds. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock Shut and roll. Up. I dreamt the kids turn into the husbands. Oh, they're there, dear. Like twists, Pepsi twist and Diet Pepsi twist. It's a twist on a great thing. Sir William Lyons, founder of Jaguar, once said, the car is the closest thing we will ever create to something that is alive. I'm Robert Jordan. Tonight on WGN News, Pope John Paul II marks the day before Easter with a solemn candlelight vigil. For this story and other Easter traditions, be sure to join us at 9. Steve Mark Pryor got the big out in this ballgame he needed in the sixth. He's got a 1 0 advantage. Well, we said that he can go up by design and keep it out of the strike zone, and he went up and in and threw it right by Ramirez. A cascade of boos coming from the stands. But this guy's one of the hardest guys in the league to hit. And I don't think the fans understand how good his control is. And what you're watching, folks, is a guy that throws a lot like Tom Seaver used to throw. He's just painting inside, outside, up and down, and he does not wilt under the pressure at a very tender age. It really is remarkable, remarkable to watch, and a lot of fun, too. Well, I think he was frustrated by his last outing, and he's gone out there like a man on a mission tonight. So he stopped Choi with the game's lone RBI, a double in the fourth inning. Leads things off, and that one slashed into the seats. And they've got great music between innings. And Chip, as I told you, with Def Leppard last inning, and of course, you know my favorite group, Pink, next inning, if they could break out Fuchsia, I'd be a very happy man. 
Either 50 cent or ludicrous would be okay with me. Swing and that's ripped back to the to the screen. One ball. Two strikes. And of course, you can relate to four inch nails, is it? What's the name of that group? Actually, it's nine inch nails. Ah. <laughs> I get confused with all of these groups. Yeah, you are. And those new names, you yeah, know. You're a big music <laughs> fan, I can tell. Stephen M. Stone, you know, music yeah. is my life. There's a line there, but the FCC <laughs> is watching. And that's our email address. We welcome your comments on Steve's musical acumen. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. And when you're hitting well and you Yet to be known as having a pretty good eye, you'll get the benefit of these calls. Choi holds up on that curveball. And Tim Sheeta said, take another pitch, son. Full count, base is clear. He'll stay alive again. This has been a just a beautifully pitched game. We have gotten very spoiled from the Cubs perspective at seeing games like this. It's nice to see the Cubs come through with some clutch hitting against a very good young pitcher provided by the opposition. And Choi, the man that's done that. Again, a full count offering to the Cub first baseman. Strike three. Thought he earned the walk. But it's seven strikeouts for Wells in this seventh inning. Well, I think Choi might have thought this one was down. But it had good movement, looked like it caught the corner. Then Jeff Nelson rings him up. It was high enough. Don't see he stop argued too much. He's a man that has pretty good command of the zone. But he wisely doesn't try to show up the umpire, just accepts his fate and heads back to the seat. I'd like to see Corey Bunt here because you've got Simon well back at first. They're giving him a base hit if he pulls it up the first base side. And the Cubs could use a base runner who could steal a base. Ball two to the Cubs center fielder. He was looking for his first hit of the series. He did have a sacrifice fly in the first inning of last night's game. Lloyd McClendon will tell Spin Williams to make a call to the bullpen. Although it's not because the stuff is diminishing, but he's thrown 104 pitches. And that might be why here in the seventh, just in case they're getting that very talented bullpen up and going. It's Brian Bowringer. Two balls and a strike. Base is clear. Two and two. Wants a new sign. I can't believe you didn't know nine inch nails. Crap. Come on. I can relate to those young groups. What are they, 50 now? I think so. I don't. That one missed inside as the Cubs would dearly love to have Patterson with his great speed aboard. I figure you being a big time homeowner and the desert Southwest, all the remodeling you've done, you know all about nails. That's, that's that's another story. Wells and Kendall can't get together. Full count. Corey will stay alive after the game tomorrow. We head back home. A brief three-game set with the Padres. Good tickets available. Tuesday night, Wednesday and Thursday afternoons for Cubs tickets. They're starting to go quickly. Call 1 800 the Cubs. Visit online at Cubs.com. After that, the Cubs won't return home until May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th against the Rockies, then the Brewers, then the Cardinals for the first time, May 9th, 10th, and 11th. 3 2 pitch, skied into center field, and Kenny Lofton makes the play. 
out number two. Well, perfect night so far for Mark Bellhorn. Wells has given up just two hits. Unfortunately for him, one was a ringing double after hitting a Lou in the fourth inning. He stopped Choi driving in his 11th run, the only run of the ball game. And the Cubs with just two hits. And the way they've been swinging the bat, that's an indication of how dominating Wells has been in this game. Two pitches he wishes he had back. Hit by a pitch to Alu, and the double allowed Choi. As last night's winner, Matt Clement, looks on in game two this evening. Nothing personal, but I hope Lloyd McClendon gets this guy out of the game. Not many have touched him up for anything tonight. He's been awfully tough and knocking at the door of 110 pitches. You might think this would be his last go round. And I would think, Chip, if you're facing Mark Bellhorn, knowing that he does have pretty good power from both sides of the plate, and you've handled Damian Miller very well, I think I'd have to throw him the curveball. But you can't really look for it. You have to look for a fastball and adjust on down. One, two. Nelson has been consistent. That outside corner has not been to the pitcher's advantage this evening. Well, Moises Salou told me you can't look breaking ball off a guy who throws in the mid 90s because you'll never catch up to the fastball if you do. So a 2 2 count to Mark Bellhorn. The base is clear. Kendall couldn't hang on. That was one of the few straight changes that Wells has thrown tonight. He got it up, but rather than location, it was velocity and motion that fooled Bellhorn. Full count now to the Cup third baseman. Well, the one thing you always love to see, Chip, is the way. It's one of the things that unfortunately has not been outlawed in the game today. Three two. That pops away and Bellhorn's aboard with two outs. And you wonder if they'd go out and ask Wells if he feels he's got enough left. Like lemmings to the sea. So they haven't tried to run on Kendall yet, and at times, Kendall has had good enough footwork. He does not have an overpowering arm, however. And I would send Bellhorn in this situation. Might be able to steal a run. Thinking of that, Wells to first. He did throw one ball away earlier in the game. Again, it was Bellhorn at first. Pirates thought Miller was going to bunt. Simon came charging in. Wells stepped off and had to throw it first and threw it into the corner. But the Cubs were unable to score. Mark not moving. Pirates pitch out. One ball, no strikes. But Simon does something unusual. He stands off the first base bag about a step and a half. And most first basemen will put the foot on the line. And that throw takes a little longer to get to them, but there you see Simon, who's a huge man. He wants to force a guy to go around him. Hey, he blocks off the base. We saw the White Sox employ that strategy with Paul Pinerco at first base. He plays off the bag and then moves back as the throw to first comes in. When it works, I'm sure it's very effective, but if the pitcher and first baseman aren't on the same page. <laughs> Everybody's feet can get tangled up and you have big problems. Like that. And Bellhorn to second base I with think that, two outs. I think that has to be an error on Simon. And we told you that he's not going to win any gold gloves at first. But we'll take another look at it. Kip Wells not very happy. And you wonder if they'll walk Miller. This is a good throw. He caught it with the glove pointing down. Well, just a case of temporary blindness. As Bellhorn moves up to second. And it, it goes as an air on Wells, and they might want to rethink that one. 
Yeah, if Simon turns the glove the other way, it's an easy scoop for him. Yeah, that's. I'm not sure that really was in the dirt. Let's watch it again. This throw is good enough. And it really isn't in the dirt. And they're going to walk Miller. Take their chances with Pryor. So that's three walks for Wells, his first intentional pass of the night. And again, I. Whatever makes Simon and Lloyd McClendon comfortable over at first base is fine, but it seems to me that's a very delicate ballet dance over there at first base. If you've got a guy that's anchored at the bag with that base runner coming on, you don't have to worry about moving your feet, moving into the line and catching the ball and applying the tag. If you're anchored, you catch the ball and apply the tag to the base runner. It seems to be a much simpler play the way the Pirates aren't doing it. Well, also, we're not talking about a Mark Grace like first no. baseman, so. I think with a defense that has been as inconsistent as the defense for the Pirates and in close games you can't afford a mistake like that. Let's see if Mark Pryor can make him pay. First time tonight two men have been on at the same time for the Cubs and Wells misses outside. Brent Atlantic waiting on deck Cubs by a run we're in the seventh trying to maybe deliver a knockout blow here in game two of this three game series. Lloyd McClendon trying to find some offense. Standing next to a former Cub coach, Pete McCannon. He was in their minor league system for a while. Lloyd's done a pretty good job here by and large, and he says the reason that he appears to be a better manager this year, he's got much more talent than in the last couple of years. This is the final year of his contract. We talked about the attendance woes the Pirates have. They do have monetary issues, being a small market team at all. But anyone who follows the game will tell you, more often than not, a manager is only as good as his players. And frankly, the Pirates haven't had a lot of good players here the first couple of years for Lloyd McClendon. They're a lot better this year, though. And Wells in real trouble. Three balls and a strike. Well, I got to tell you, Chip, that. Wells is running out of gas. The question is, with two outs in the inning, and undoubtedly Mark Pryor is going to see a fastball here. Can he take advantage of it? And if he gets it middle in, the outfielders are too shallow. Two on, two out. Three one count to Mark. Good cut. Now the advantage to the Cub runners. They'll be moving with two outs. 125 pitches for Wells. He's given the Pirates everything he's got tonight. We'll show you the defense. Sanders, Lofton, and Stairs. The Pryor's pretty strong if he can get a hold of one. Runners lead. There they go. Struck him out of the inside corner. And Wells with pitch number 126 keeps the game at one as we stretch in Pittsburgh. When I look at Steve and Jenny, I just think, wow, what did Jenny have that all the others didn't? Because Steve's had a lot of women, women all over the world, you know, Europe, Asia, Africa. You name it, Steve's been there. One word, buddy. Amsterdam. Huh? Yeah, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Well, what can I say? The guy's been around. You know, on the block. A couple hundred times. <laughs> Win power, performance, and great offers. Accelerate your pulse. It's Pontiac performance season. With Smart Buy Financing, get a Grand Am SE solid value for around $189 a month. Call for complete Smart Buy details. This is not a lease. Own your Grand Am today. See your Chicagoland Pontiac dealer. Bottom line, we've got to boost margins. Do more with less. Slash the ad budget. Scale back in the Pacific Rim. Actually, IT has a plan. We're going with Dell. Dell's as focused on you as they are on driving down costs. Power Edge servers, Intel Xeon processors. It's the flexibility you need. And that cuts costs, not productivity. Smart move, Dave. Now we won't even have to cut the free coffee. 
Find out how you can cut costs across your enterprise. Easy as Dell. Call or go online today. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. We have a very crowded flight today, and all overhead space is full. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, you win. As we celebrate this Easter and Passover weekend, and a child shall lead them. Mark Pryor and Aesop Choi as we look at our summaries have been tonight's stars. Well, a huge double play turned, and Rosalanik does a great job. And Mark Pryor has been dominating. You've got to retire Simon here because if he gets on, you'll probably see Pokey Reese pinch running for him. So Simon to work. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, he's singled, he's grounded out. Well, I worry about him because he's the one left-hander who can consistently provide some power. Ground ball right side, Rodzelanek, good pickup, plenty of time. Well, that was a veteran move at second, knowing who was running, made sure his feet were settled, got the good foundation, and a perfect throw for out number one. Well, I would have to believe that Mark Pryor gets out of this inning unscathed. That's going to be it for Kip Wells. I would think that he let it all go in the seventh inning and in excess of 125 pitches you would think they would go to the bullpen. It is working for the Pirates. And here's another home run threat Reggie Sanders. He's 0 for 2 on the night. Well, Mike Williams hasn't thrown in five days. They got to get him some work. Good cut straight back. Strike one. Well, I hope you're enjoying this one as much as we are around the country on WGN tonight. Just past 9 o'clock in the Eastern Time Zone, and the Cubs clinging to a 1-0 lead. Mark Pryor and Kip Wells. And if one pitcher coming out of that bullpen you'd like to see, it would be Brian Boehringer, the one guy struggling. One of the reasons why you have to get by Sanders is that He's probably right now the most prolific base stealer they have on this team. Pirates not hitting the ball out of the park much. That was a fair ball. ball and Reggie Sanders thought it hit his body. And that'll be out number two. Reggie, instead of running, did some umpiring. And Jeff Nelson pounced out, said fair ball, called him out, and Lloyd McClendon will argue. Well, all Lloyd wants to do is Asked Jeff Nelson to get some help, but Jeff Nelson said, I saw it all the way, I don't need any help. And there's a break for the Cubs. Easily retiring a guy that could do you some big damage on the base pads. So Lloyd McClendon's plea for help from Alfonso Marquez is unrewarded. Sanders tagged out to unassisted. Did the ball hit him? Sanders thinks it got a piece of his body. We'll take another look and it doesn't look like it got any of that front leg. And to his credit Damian Miller does no umpiring he just makes the out to you. Here's Makobiak. The Pirates. Have out hit the Cubs five to two tonight. And Sanders left standing in the batter's box with a big second out. And none other than Hall of Famer Jim Palmer once told me with the game on the line when a home run can tie you or beat you keep the ball away and make sure that they beat you to the opposite field and it will take a titanic clout for that to happen and for the Pirates just two home runs in their last seventy five and two thirds innings. Nikoviak has no home runs and no runs batted in. And he strikes out a lot. Hot shot toward Bellhorn. Good pickup. High throw, but Choi corrals that. Pryor is through the seventh inning with a shutout. One nothing. Cubs still lead it. On the WB Monday, the 
the first of five all-new episodes of Everwood. Colin's been through hell to get where he is. He can handle it. How can you be so clueless? He is not the person we grew up with. That's weird. I've never noticed you before. Should you have? I like to know when I'm in the presence of greatness. Everwood, Monday night at 8 on WGN. Tuesday, a hero loses control. Now, trust will turn to fear. All-new Smallville, Tuesday night at 8 on WGN. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by your local Ford store. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. You know you gotta live with this. I know. Tenth one of these I've done this week. Doesn't surprise me. What's your boyfriend gonna do when he sees this? What do you think? Ford Focus, now only $199 a month, including a 100,000-mile extended service plan. It's easy to see why some make Focus a permanent part of their lives, and others get knocked off their feet. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Cubs fans, still looking to get tickets to the hottest Cubs games this summer? Visit www.cubs.com and click on the ticket exchange. See a Cubs game from the best seats at Wrigley Field. Check out the ticket exchange at www.cubs.com or call 866-272-6614 for more information. That number again, 866-272-6614. Dan Roan on Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. <laughs> what a pitcher's duel in Pittsburgh tonight. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, 1-0. Cubs have the lead. They finally chased Kip Wells. And that may not even be an accurate way of putting it. He threw about 127 pitches and was victimized by a great night for Mark Pryor on the Cubs mound. Well, Kip Wells was just terrific, just not quite as good as Mark Pryor at this point. Bow ring around for the eighth time. 0 and 1, the ERA knocking at the door of 12. He pumps over a quick strike. Top of the order for the Cubs. Red Zolanik, Gonzalez, and Sosa. Cubs could dearly use a run to help Mark Pryor make things a little easier. And out of the one guy out of the bullpen chip, Bowringer is one of the few guys struggling. Everybody else out of the pen has been awfully tough. Mark pops it out of play. One ball, two strikes. We owe you a station break. Let's pause for identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN TV, Chicago's WB. One and two. Retzelonic lines it out of play. Well, coming back to the broadcast, Chip, after a long hiatus, I'm surprised between Skip Ellison and Pete Toma how good they are at rejoiners. The best in the business. One ball, two strikes. Missed with that. Two and two. Big controversy between innings here tonight as to which musical interlude will entertain the crowd going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Grounded towards second. One man out. The choices were Neil Young with Rock in the Free World, Tony Basil with O Ricky. Yes, or but that was Justin Timberlake rock your body. Well, not Jason Timberlake, but that second one, Tony. Tony ba Tony Oregano? No, it's Tony Basil. It's a, a, a medley of her hit. It's an olden goldie. There's no doubt. Here's Gonzalez. He's 0 for 3. Justin Timberlake, just for the record, was booed unmercifully by the Pittsburgh faithful. The fans here are slow to warm up to. Those young fellows. They still like ABBA an awful lot here. One ball, one strike. If they didn't play for the Steelers, they don't want to hear about it. Base is clear for Alex. And that one in the air to the right side. Makoviak has a beat on it. Now let's see if Sosa can give some insurance with one swing of the stick. 
Will be Nunez. Right field pinch hitter and then to the top with Loft and in the eighth inning. We still have Kevin Young on the bench. He normally comes in defensively, but Lloyd McClendon wants to use his potent bat. Jack and Craig Wilson still available. Sosa, five hits and 12 tries against Bo Ringer lifetime. Well, look how far off the plate Sammy is right now. That one dances in for a strike. Well, by doing that, Chip, he's inviting the ball away. They had a guy here that had a decent career by the name of Roberto Clemente who tried to do the same thing. Scott Sauerbeck up in the Pirate pen. Should this get down to Choi and Patterson in the eighth inning? Sauerbeck having another great year. One and two to Sammy. Pretty good pitch by Boring here. He got that pitch in off the plate. Take another look at it. That one fouled off the front foot. If Sammy looks away here. He could take the ball out in right field. Wind is blowing toward the right field corner. The one two pitch popped up. Back toward us. Had that one timed nicely, but he got under it and swings again with a one ball, two strike count. Bowringer wearing number 71. Must have some significance. As you don't see many relievers with a number like that. If you do, they're in Bradenton. The pitch. Strike three. One, two, three, and out in the eighth inning. Bottom half coming up. Still a one run cut lead. Coach, I think you're going to love our improvements. After working That's hard to improve track. America's cars and trucks, Chevy went to work on America's favorite pastime. Maybe we'll just stick to what we do best. Now make your money count with 0% APR for 60 months on every 2003 Chevy SUV. Or get $3,000 cash back. Keep your visor down. Good luck. Go get them. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. Right. With a large color screen, next generation intelligence, and the latest accessories, the Motorola T720 has quite an effect on people. Hey, Ray. Get on over here. See you, boys. Get $100 off a T720 or up to $100 off Motorola original accessories when you sign up for a qualified calling plan at an AT&T wireless store. See an architect. A 23 city tour. The next big idea. We stand in awe of you and your creative potential. It's what inspires us to create software that helps you reach it. It's powerful. It's beautiful. I can see that. How did they make it so incredibly smooth? It's technical. Antonio, tonight we'll try my car. Again? Again. Introducing the entirely new Lexus RX 330. Putting the world on notice. Again. Abraham Nunez leads off the eighth inning and quickly takes a strike from Mark Pryor. It's a one nothing game as you see late in Pittsburgh. And Mark ahead of him 0-2. Pitcher spot is due next. Let's see what Lloyd McClendon has in mind. It's Jack Wilson. The light hitting shortstop. Well, maybe he's thinking Nunez can get on. And then Wilson can butt him over. And take a shot with Lofton and Kendall, who's had a big night tonight. A perfect three for three in the number two spot in the batting order. But getting on has been the problem for Nunez. He's 0 for 2 tonight. One of the keys for Mark Breyer has been consistently throwing strike one. He's been ahead of the Pirate hitters all night long.
two strikes. Little tapper toward Bellhorn. Has to wait for the ball. Long throw across. And Choi with a stretch held that bag. What a play by Hesop Choi at first base. Mark Bellhorn has been fielding the ball well. And if Hesop Choi does not need rotator cuff surgery, he should have a pretty good year defensively because Choi needs all 6 5 to catch the ball and stay on the bag. This is a real good play by Choi, who is an inviting target at first base, and that's a huge first out. Adam Heisdu now will come on and will bat for Bo Ringer, who worked a perfect eighth inning with a strikeout. Just called up from Triple A Nashville when Giles went to the disabled list. And he's hitting a robust 500. One for two, and it was a double. I believe that he might have come up with the Cincinnati Reds not too long ago. He's been with a couple of different organizations. First round draft pick of the Giants back in 1990, never made it to the big leagues with them. Came to the Reds in the Rule 5 draft. Cincinnati released him, went to Boston, went to Arizona, went to the Mexican League, back to Boston, and signed with the Pirates in 1999. And he's had three different stops here with the Pirates. This his fourth. Hit 11 home runs for him in 59 games last season. Well, this at bat stops here with a good breaking ball low and away. Two out. Five strikeouts for Pryor. They have no left handed bats off the bench, so Heisdu, the first man called upon, and he whips, and that sets it up for Lofton. Two out. And Chip, that's one of the big problems with Brian Giles hurt. You're playing a lot of the guys who would normally be on your bench who you could go to late. But Makoviak in the game, Randall Simon starting. And they're getting a little thin on that bench. They started Nunez, who switch hits instead of Jack Wilson, and Nunez was their most used pinch hitter last year. So hasn't worked out. Alex at short. Better hurry. Lofton can fly. Choi, another great stretch at first base. What a play in this eighth inning by Hesop Choi. Two defensive saves with the glove. It's still one nothing going to the ninth. Chicago Cops Baseball, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. More than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. Guess what? Guess what? Susie Fetterman got sick, so I don't have to be the dumb dinosaur. I get to be the peacock. Great. <laughs> peacock. Want to get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to select cities in the Midwest for just $34 each way. You are now free to move about the country. Closed captioning for Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Jiffy Lube, Chicago land at Northwest Indiana's well-oiled machine. 
Friday, May 9th, this floppy hat day at Wrigley Field. The first 10,000 adults 21 and older get a Cubs floppy hat compliments of Budweiser. Don't miss the excitement. The Cubs and the Cardinals at 220. For tickets, call 800 the Cubs or visit Cubs.com. Scott Sauerbeck comes into the ball game on for the eighth time, does not have an ERA yet. Five and a third innings, four strikeouts. Out of all the left handers active in baseball, he is number four in strikeouts per nine innings. Pretty good trivia question. A little insurance would be nice. Everybody could use some insurance. Here's Halu. He has scored the only run in this game. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning, and then he sopped Choi, doubled him home. Choi also has saved the day with two spectacular grabs at first base in that eighth inning to send it to the ninth with a one run advantage for the Cubs. Airtight pitching goes hand in hand with good defense and tonight the Cubs defense has been brilliant. And if you're going to win one run games you're going to have to execute like the Cubs have executed tonight. Sauerbeck drops the arm angle that time and missed outside one ball two strikes. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, Kendall, Stairs, and Ramirez are due for Pittsburgh. But first things first, Alou watches that one pants outside. Sauerbeck appeared in 78 games last year with an ERA of 230. What a valuable man he's been to the Pirates. Missed the back door again. Full count to Alou. A leadoff walk sure would be nice. And you've got the two lefties, Choi and Patterson, with Bellhorn waiting in the dugout. Lofton's playing in straightaway center. And Sauerbeck likes to float that breaking ball from the outside part of the plate in. That's the ball that Moises can hit up the gap in left center, and you can run all day. Drives that one foul to the right side. One thing about Alou, he makes very good contact. Has struck out once tonight, but has only struck out four times all year for the Cubs. And he coaxes a leadoff walk here in that ninth inning. That's a big play. Now it's Choi and Patterson. Do you consider a pitch runner here for Alou? I don't, certainly. But we'll see what Dusty has in mind. Great defense by Isam Choi, and one of the reasons why you don't consider a pinch hitter here is the fact that defensively, Choi is terrific. No pinch runner for Alou. No, I think I think his legs feeling pretty good. Breaking ball in for a strike. Thinking being maybe you you get Goodwin to play left field. Put him in for speed. You might be able to run yourself into a man in scoring position with Choi and Patterson facing the left hander here. But you also have to worry in a one run game if disaster strikes and the Pirates somehow tie it, you want to keep Alou's bat that's, in the game. That's what you have to consider. And as good as Mark Pryor has been, one run is a precarious lead, and you really hate to take Moises Alou's bat out of the lineup. Ground ball to the right side might be two. Second one. Good hard slide by Alou. Well, Moises goes in as hard as anybody, and we saw earlier in the game Makoviak take out Grozelanik. And you could take it to the bank on a slow hit ball to the right side that Moises Alou was going to get at least a piece of Nunez. And as you can see, Moises leaving nothing to chance. Breaking up the double play. His teammates appreciate that effort and no double play called by Rick Reed. Alou was clearly 
within an arm's reach of the bag there. Here's where you love to see a bunt because Sauerbeck falls off the mound to the third base side. Let's see if Corey thinks about it. Pirates want to see if he tips his hand. He doesn't. Well, I'm not sure if he's thinking about it, but Simon, as we know, is not an artistic first baseman. And Got Sauerbeck McCoviak. won't be able to beat Patterson to the bag. And McCoviak way back at second. Corey held up for ball one. Patterson tonight 0 for 3. Well, that's a big run in the form of Hesop Choi potentially at first base. 1 0. We're in the ninth tonight. Boy, Sarabek flirts with a balk, does he not, with that move? Well, most left handers, Chip, will, when they make that move, they will continue walking toward first because they think they can get away with a better step if they do that. One ball, no strikes to Corey. No horn, switch hitting, waiting on deck. Well, here's where the lefty lefty advantage evens out because he's fallen behind with two breaking balls and now. If you're a left hand hitter you just look fastball nothing else. Two and zero. Oh. back to the mound second base for one first base two. Cubs get a lead off walk in the ninth and Sauerbeck slams the door shut. But we go to the bottom of the ninth inning middle of the order coming up for the Pirates down a run. I'm Robert Jordan. Coming up tonight on WGN News, families and friends of seven rescued prisoners of war are eagerly awaiting their return to Texas. We'll have their big welcome home. Plus, a local Marine killed in the war with Iraq is laid to rest. Reaction from those who will never forget 25-year-old Marine Sergeant Dwayne Rios. For those stories and more, tune in tonight at 9. You shrunk us! Join a roller coaster ride of microscopic proportions. Honey, we shrunk ourselves. Sunday morning at 11 on WGN. Making the impossible possible. Henry Ford had the vision to build cars everyone could afford and the passion to put the world on wheels. It's Ford's 100th year anniversary, and we're celebrating by offering you a special $5 a day lease on Ford Mustang and Ranger. That's $5 a day on Mustang and Ranger. So visit the family of Ford dealers for this one-of-a-kind lease offer as we celebrate our 100th anniversary. So if you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Has anyone seen Johnson? He called in again. Must really be sick. What do you got? Order Comcast Digital Cable with HBO for only $39.99 a month for three months. I heard they got to fly the grandmother in. You'll get multiple channels of award-winning HBO originals and movies when you order Comcast Digital Cable. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. So call today. Has anyone seen Miller? The Hyundai Sonata, ranked most appealing entry midsize car. More standard features than a Toyota Camry LE, including a V6 engine. Over 2,400 less when comparably equipped. Add in America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, and you win. Test drive the Hyundai Sonata, starting at just 14,524. At your Hyundai dealer. Hurry in for $1,000 cash back or 0% APR. Plus, current Hyundai owners get an extra $1,000 cash back through April 30th. Mark Pryor's looking for his second complete game shot out of the year. In the ninth inning, he leads by a run, and Jason Kendall, with three of the five Pirate hits, is the first man he faces, and he pumps over a quick strike one. Got to be careful if you throw the fastball inside, because Kendall will do anything, including using that front elbow to get on base. Breaking ball missed. You'll remember a couple of years ago, Kendall in the ninth inning of a game in a home run right down the left field line over the outstretched glove of Rondell White, who missed a game saving catch by an inch. Driven in the air to right. That's playable for Choi and Grudzelani. Who wants it? Hesop is there, and he couldn't come up. Oh, that's a big play. It's a big play because what Choi has to do is get close to the stands and then drift the other way with the ball. As you can see, he had another two steps 
But you've got to locate the stands and then you can make that play. It's going to go as no play. I mean, it's a difficult play. But that's the first chink in the armor for Kesop Choi tonight. He's been spectacular at first base. So Kendall, new life. One ball, two strikes. That was a tough play, but it's one he saw to tell you he should make. Jack Sway. Kendall stays alive. Rusty Poots, the first base coach, will make a friend in the front row. Matt Stairs waits next, then Aramis Ramirez. A one run thriller in game two in Pittsburgh tonight. One two pitch. Line drive off the glove of Alex at short and into center field. Jason Kendall, four for four, and the time run is on. You give that guy second life, he's going to make you pay. The fastball, instead of being away, got too much of the plate. Alex diving to his left just misses this one. And now Matt Stairs with an opportunity. Stairs looking for his first home run, his first RBI. He's 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Cubs would love a ground ball at somebody. Kendall with good speed, a lead at first, and a quick strike one to Stairs. Kendall 2 for 2 in stolen bases. Not many catchers in all of baseball can say that. Pryor got two double play ground balls in the first two innings of this game. He would love one here. The Metsters is normally a dead full hitter, so with Brozelanek not playing him in the hole, it would normally indicate to you that he would be trying to stay away from stairs. Again, the thought process if he hits it out, make him hit it to the 410 or the 389 area. One and one. Breaking ball, rolled toward Choi. Touches the ball in fair ground and makes the play. Kendall, though, moves to second base with one out. Stairs did his job. He advanced the man to scoring position. Now it's Ramirez, who's 0 for 3, and the Cup pen getting ready in a hurry. Joe Borowski, the ever present Joe Borowski, and Mark Guthrie. Well, the game plan here will be interesting. He's handled Ramirez all night and he's handled him rather easily. If you get Ramirez, do you have the courage to put the potential winning run on base or do you pitch to Simon, the toughest hitter in this lineup? Ramirez, oh, for the Knights. Out of play, strike one. He punched out with Kendall at third base and two outs in the sixth. He's been working him exclusively with high fastballs just out of the zone and he's been overpowering him inside. No balls and a strike. Kendall a big lead. He didn't miss by much. Jason Kendall, a four hit night tonight. The rest of the Pirate team has two hits. Two balls and a strike. Now it's three and one. Simon waiting on deck. The cup pen is ready if needed. The three one to the pirate third baseman. Where was that? Two on, one out. Larry Rothschild coming out from 
the dugout. Take another look at it. That's right down the middle. Well, unfortunately, Damian Miller brought the ball down, which normally shows that the catcher thought it might have been up a little bit. So everybody meeting at the mound as they talk it over with Mark Pryor. Shows you the confidence that Dusty Baker has in this young man. The winning run now represented by pinch runner Pokey Reese at first base as he comes on the pinch run for Ramos Ramirez. Again a double play would end this game. Simon tonight is one for three with two ground outs to second. Simon on the year has hit into one twin killing. And he does not have great speed. Two on, one out in a one run game. And a fly ball foul left side. Strike one to the Pirate first baseman. Huge gap in left center field for Simon. If he splits it, Pirates are going to win the game. Mark sets the 0 1 pitch right down the middle strike two to Simon. Not much doubt about this as that one tails back over the plate. How much more does Pryor have in the tank tonight. Got a run in the fourth he's made it stand up the 0 2 pops away runners are going to move up. Opens up a world of possibilities for the Pirates. Second wild pitch of the year. Interesting defense. They will play halfway on the right side. And all the way back on the left. Breaking ball, ground ball. The game's going to be tied. If he didn't throw the wild pitch and Simon hit the ball there, the game would be over. Instead, Jason Kendall's fourth hit of the night scores the tying run. There are two outs, and you've got Sanders in the box, and you're not out of trouble yet. Pokey Reese at third base with two away. Big is the drop to pop. High fly ball, twisting foul. Strike one. We talked about it with regard to the Pirates and Kip Wells. In a game this tight, one mistake costs you dearly. He hit Alu with a pitch. Choi doubled him home. Isak couldn't catch a long pop up and foul ground off the bat of Kendall. Leading off the inning, and then he lined a bullet off the glove of Alex to start this ninth inning. It's a 1 1 game, and Reggie Sanders down to his last strike. Now, you really don't want to mess around with that slider in the dirt again. Got the winning run 90 feet away. But eye high fastballs, inner portion probably will get you out of the inning. On a chopper in the infield with everybody back, you really have to hurry because Sanders can get down the line. Oh. Fish is cut. He didn't miss it by much. Kobiak on deck. Let's worry about him in the tenth. This has been a magnificently pitched game. Strike three. 
Breaking ball frozen. And we go to bonus Cantos in Pittsburgh. It's a 1-1 game at the end of nine. You know him as the Golden Boy. He's your e boy. Soon they'll meet Mono E Mono. Don't miss the action when superstar Oscar De La Hoya defends his world title against former world champ Yori Boy Compass. May 3rd, live on pay per view. Compass wants the crown. Oscar says, Come and get it. It's the Golden Boy and Yori Boy, man to man. It's a night of champions brought to you by Budweiser. Win power, performance, and great offers. Accelerate your pulse. It's Pontiac performance season. With Smart Buy Financing, get a Grand Am SC solid value for around $189 a month. Call for complete Smart Buy details. This is not a lease. Own your Grand Am today. See your Chicagoland Pontiac dealer. We head to the 10th inning, a wild bottom half of the ninth inning. It all started with Jason Kendall. He hit a high pop-up that he stopped Choi. He should have caught, didn't. No play. And then Kendall, a line drive off Alex Gonzalez's glove, a leadoff single. Stairs bounces into the force play at first. That's the big play, the wild pitch. They move men to second and third, then the ground ball to second off the bat of Simon. That scored Kendall. And then Reggie Sanders took strike three to force inning number 10 for Dusty Baker and the Cubs tonight. And Mark Bellhorn, the first man to hit. He's had a perfect night. An infield hit and two walks. And the Cubs collectively with just two base hits tonight against this Pirate staff. Got bullpen up and going, and depending on how this inning goes, depends on who will hit for Mark Pryor, who's had a magnificent night. But unfortunately, the wild pitch at the wrong time cost him the tie as we move for the first time to extra innings. No horn takes strike one. One run, two hits, no errors for the Cubs, who've left five. Pirates have run six hits and two errors in the game. One and two. Right down the middle. One away. Here's Damian Miller. Mark must have been guessing ball because. That curveball is right over the middle of the plate. And Sauerbeck continues to roll right along. He has not given up a run this year. Eric Karos waits on deck. He'll bat for Pryor, who went, if indeed he comes out of the game, nine sparkling innings tonight. In fact, for Pryor in 30 innings, he's given up five runs earned this year. And the Cubs have just two hits tonight. Mike Remlinger warming up in the pen. Well, the way the Pirates' pen is pitching, this figures to be one of the games where the Cubs' pen is going to get some work. They've been clamoring for it down there because the starting staff has done such an exemplary job. Innings have been tough to come by for the pen men. Hopefully, they'll be sharp in this one, and hopefully, the Cubs' bats can get going here in the 10th. Sauerbeck thought that was good enough. Two balls, two strikes. Pokey Reese has remained in the game at second for the Pirates. And now Lloyd McClendon starts parking. And home plate umpire Jeff Nelson's heard enough. And now Lloyd's going to come on out and ask the home plate up to take a chill pill. Well, as you know, you can't argue balls and strikes. And regardless of who it was that was airing out Jeff Nelson, he just says, look, 
I'm closer than you guys. That pitch curved around the plate. Hot shot up the middle, and into center field for a base hit. So Damian Miller's aboard with one out, and Eric Karos will stride to the batter's box here. And now you'll see the pinch runner. Miller given another life takes it right back up the middle past Abraham Nunez and now Tom Goodwin checks in at first base and Eric Karos will get an opportunity to pinch hit. What a job by Mark Pryor. Kip Wells equally as effective, and now the game in the hands of the bullpen. There's a look at Pokey Reese, who came in as a pinch runner, and he stays in the game. Makoviak slides over to third base in place of Aramis Ramirez, who left for the pinch runner. And now Lloyd McClendon will make a double switch. Again, Mike Williams hasn't thrown in five days. Normally, you wouldn't think your closer coming in here, but not a bad idea. You want to keep this game alive for a while, and we'll see just exactly who will come in. I would assume Kevin Young might move to first base. Randall Simon coming out, and Mike Williams coming in. You've got it right on the button. Young for Simon, Williams for Sauerbeck, Carros for Pryor. Tenth inning. Cubs have the go-ahead run aboard with one out. We'll see how it works out right after this. Introducing the new Nissan Murano. With all-wheel drive, spacious interior, and 245 horsepower for your adventures in on-roading. Dave. Larry. How is that uh, Dell Consolidation going? TCO's down. Uptown? Highly available. Great. And you? <laughs> you know, we're uh, still running a proprietary Unix-based system. Right. Dell Flexible Solution with Dell PowerEd servers and Intel Xeon processors can help manage your enterprise for less. Easy as Dell. Call or go online today. Sunday, they're laying lumber in the Steel City. The Cubs must rise up and put down Pokey Reese and the Pirates in a Game 3 matchup in Pittsburgh. Cubs, Pirates. Sunday at 12.30 on WGN. WGN News Thursday. You've seen the warning stickers on gas pumps and owner's manuals. Don't use your cell phone while you're filling up. What's the real danger? Robin Baumgarten separates fact from fiction in Cellular Sparks. Thursday on WGN News at 9. Mike Williams has been just fantastic out of the bullpen the last couple of years for Pittsburgh. Hasn't given up anything so far in 2003. And he's coming on in the 10th inning with the game tied at one. Go ahead, run aboard for the Cubs, and Eric Karros coming up. Kevin Young stays in the game. He'll hit ninth. He's very good defensively, so they certainly have solidified the right side of the infield with Reese and Young in the game, and Goodwin with a good lead at first base. He's got a huge lead. Williams comes to the belt. Goodwin doesn't go, and Karros takes the ball. I want to know. Well, you've got to stay out of a double play situation here. We know that Eric doesn't run real well. You don't expect to pitch out 1 and 0, but you might expect a good move to first base. Oops. Williams throwing from the extreme first base side of the mound probably has a better move than most to first. One ball, no strikes. Tom, a big lead again. He's going. Good jump. The throw high, and he's in easily with a stolen base. Well, that's what you're looking for. And Goodwin gets a great jump. Kendall throws the ball up. Goodwin steals it easily. 
That's one of the reasons why he made this team. His ability to steal bases late and maybe turn the game around. Cubs as a team with just seven stolen bases, but that one huge. Go ahead run now in scoring position for Karos. Look at the Pirate defensive lineup. They've got Kevin Young playing in the hole between first and second, and Pokey Reese about three steps to the second base side of second base. Well, they think that Karos is going to try to pull everything, and Williams told me that he feels that the thing that separates him now from years past was that his out pitch consistently is a good hard slider. A 3 0 count to Karos. Rudzalanic on deck. And two men are on with one out. Rudzalanic, pretty good hitter against Williams. Five hits, 17 tries. That computes to a 294 average. Mark Pryor thinking about what might have been had he kept that slider out of the dirt, but the young man was just brilliant tonight. If you go nine innings on the road, and make just one or two mistakes you usually come away with a victory. It still could be tonight. He's still the pitcher of record if the Cubs can push across here. And uh, back to second goes Goodwin. He represents the go ahead run here in the 10th inning in Pittsburgh. Mike Williams has yet to give up a hit. Now we know he is not going to go this entire year without doing that. This would be as good a time as any. Absolutely. Rodzelanek digs in. Karos has got to bust it down the line if the ball's hit on the ground. Well, remember, if you can break up two and get a good piece of the pivot man, Goodwin is fast enough if you knock the pivot man down to perhaps score. And the best arm in the outfield is in left field in Reggie Sanders. One ball, no strikes. Good one, a big lead out at second. Williams delivers, and it's fouled off Kendall. <laughs> Phillies win tonight. Vicente Padilla, a complete game, four hit shutout in Atlanta. 4 0 the final there. Colorado hung on to beat San Diego 10 9 at Coors Field. They've kind of confused folks here in Pittsburgh. They have a 4 4 final. Philadelphia and Atlanta. One ball, one strike. Line drive, center field base hit. Going around third. He's going to score without a throw, and the Cubs take a 2 1 lead. A five game hit streak for Grudzelanik, and Mike Williams does finally surrender that first hit of 2003. Charge that run to Sauerbeck. RBI number seven for Grezelanik, who stayed in the game after a gritty double play at second base. Line drive base hit. The Cubs have the lead and will turn it over to the bullpen with at least a one run lead. Let's get some more here. Here's Gonzalez. Alex is 0 for 4. You talk about another gut check. Performance by this Cub team here in the ninth and in the tenth. They've done it again. They've got the lead, and there's a belt deep down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone, but he pulled it out of play. That was a rocket. Strike one to Alex. That one stayed over the middle of the plate, and Gonzalez out just a little too quickly. How about Dusty Baker's managing in this 10th inning? He got the hit. He got good one in. Sent him to second. He steals it easily. Karos with a good eye walks. And then Grunzelanik puts the Cubs back in front. Mark Pryor 112 pitches in the game. 80 of them found the strike zone. <laughs> That's remarkable. The 1. Joe Borowski loosening up in the bullpen. In the 10th, Makoviak, Nunez, and Young are the scheduled pirate hitters. 
Caros leads from second. Swing and a drive deep left field. Back goes Sanders, still going. It's off the base of the wall. Eric around third is going to score. It's a double for Gonzalez, and it's a 3-1 Cup game. He's got a four-game hit streak. When you don't pitch in five days and you're the premier closer of your team that stuff just isn't as sharp and you come in to a non save situation and sometimes you make some mistakes out over the plate and that's exactly what's happened with Mike Williams now infield in Nunez is in real close to shortstop. Second and third for the Cubs. Sosa bullet up the middle. That'll score Greg Atlantic. Gonzalez around third. He will score, and the Cubs bust it open in the tenth. And look at that dugout. Five to one, your score. Every button is pushed correctly tonight. Well, as a manager, you can make the decisions, and then it's up to the players to execute. And the Cubs have been awfully tough tonight. Williams walked the first he faced. Three straight hits have been allowed, and the Cubs plate four here in the tenth. Mark Pryor in good shape to win his third game of the year, and with a drawn in infield, Sosa hits a rocket for a nine game hitting streak drives in a huge couple of runs Sammy now with 18 driven in no balls and a strike to Alu Cubs with four in the tenth those of you tuning in to watch the award winning WGN news at nine o'clock it will follow our telecast from Pittsburgh and many are heading back across the Roberto Clemente Bridge frustrated again as the Cubs about to take their fifth consecutive victory back to the team hotel. <laughs> Big crowd of over thirty one thousand here in Pittsburgh. And they are awfully quiet. Two and one. These are the kinds of games that special teams find a way to win. And the Cubs in great position to do that this evening. Well, as we know, Chip, in many of the years past, the Cubs would take a game like this into the ninth inning and then snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory by making yet another wild pitch or a bad defensive play not the case this year but if they do hang on to win a well deserved win for Mark Pryor who made just one or two mistakes all night and it's got to make he stopped Choi, Choi feel pretty good too. his teammates gave him a big pick me up in this tenth inning. On a night when he played so so brilliantly that drop pop up gave uh, the Pirates hope and look at Pryor he's in line to win it but he's still steaming I think about that base hit to Kendall in the, t in the ninth inning well he's still a very young man and he's going to have a lot of W's before it's over. Three balls, two strikes, runner goes, and there's another base hit. Right now, Williams doesn't have much. Sosa's going to challenge Sanders' arm. He'll beat that play, first and third with one out. And all of a sudden, the Cubs have out hit the Pirates 7 6, and Alou continues a 10th inning battle. The worst thing that can happen to a closer is not overuse, it's rust. And that's what Mike Williams is showing you here tonight. When you don't appear in a game in five days, you're just not going to have that control that you need and Mike Williams has never been an overpowering pitcher and tonight that slider has stayed up in the zone and the Cubs have pounded away at Mike Williams. 
So a chance now for a five game winning streak and a chance for the Cubs to do something that they haven't done in a real long time. That is send five starters out in successive games and have all five of them pick up wins. The last time that happened was in July of 1993. This one's not over yet, but Mark Pryor and the Cubs sitting pretty here in our 10th inning, leading 5 1. Great Scott! When four of the world's most fiendish villains join forces. Holy nightmare! We haven't one moment to lose! Only Batman and Robin can possibly stop them. If we can't, heaven knows who can. Let's get him. This fearsome foursome has a dastardly plan. The greatest criminal coup anyone ever dreamed of! Ah! Uh, uh. Now the world's fate is in the dynamic duo's hands. Batman! Tonight at 10.30 on WGN, Chicago's WB. On the WB's Big Sunday after Gilmore Girls' beginnings, it's all new. Good witches make naughty nymphs. You got any frolicking little tree sprites? I'm not sure we should be doing this. I always have to give them a little something something. How did this happen? Can we go back to the whole, like, <sighs> part? All new charmed naughty nymphs, then. Critics say Black Sash is a winner. I'm not going down without a fight. Black Sash. Sunday night at 7 on WGN. Comedy Sutra, the positions of comedy. The knucklehead. You are a complete freak. The belly laugh. The leg pull. The foot in mouth. The butt of all jokes. Drew Cap, Will and Grace, friends, everybody loves Raymond. Weekday starting at 5 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Well, the Cubs G-Men did it again in this 10th inning. Mike Williams hasn't pitched in nearly a week. Goodwin was involved, too, with that key stolen base. Pinch running for Damian Miller, who got the one-out hit off Sauerbeck. But four straight hits off Williams after a walk. He departs, and Dennis Reyes is the fifth Pirate pitcher. He's the third left-hander in that pen, on for the fifth time, the ERA 245. Cubs lead by four. Choi has doubled home a run. And, uh, he'll be taken down for Ramon Martinez here. A big four run ten. Ball two outside. Tomorrow, Sean Estes and Josh Fogg hook up. They'll be on the air at 12.30 Chicago time. Right here on WGN. As the Cubs go for the sweep. That is assuming they can hold a 5-1 lead. That one skied into center. That ought to be deep enough to score Sosa. Lofton gives ground, comes up cleanly. He will surrender the run. Martinez, a pinch hit sack fly. It's 6-1. So Dusty calls upon Martinez. He drives home Sosa. And the Cubs have a five-run lead. Corey Patterson, the hitter. Let's pause quickly for station identification. This is America's number one sports station. WGN-TV, Chicago's WB. Patterson tonight looking for his first base hit. And he should have it. Lofton plays that on a hop. And this Pittsburgh pen, which has been so good, is imploding in the ninth and tenth innings. The Cubs bat around here in the tenth. And Chip, there is a vicious rumor going around saying that with Easter Sunday just a very few hours away that if the Cubs were to sweep the Pirates the general manager Jim Henry would ride home on the team charter in an Easter bunny suit <laughs> better be a big suit uh, I don't know where 
Jim's general manager box is upstairs. We'll see if we can find him. If he's not in there, he might be calling the costume company to have one on standby tomorrow just in case. Little ground ball to the left side. Makoviak fields cleanly. And a good stretch at first by Young. What a tenth inning for the Cubs. They send ten men to the plate and score five times. And it's all Cubs late in Pittsburgh. On the WB's Big Sunday, it's your second chance to view two WB dramas, the first of six all-new Smallville's. An outsider with a miraculous gift will reveal all that's hidden in Lana's heart. How would you feel about him if he actually was from another planet? Easy View Smallville. Then, TV Guide calls Everwood one of the best shows you may not be watching, but should. Easy View Everwood after Smallville. It all starts early. It all starts Sunday at 4 on WGN. They were an ordinary family with one small problem. You shrunk us! You idiot! Join a roller coaster ride of microscopic proportions. Honey, we shrunk ourselves. Sunday morning at 11 on WGN. We know everybody loves Raymond. Ray goes to work, people do the wave. But with Robert, it's a whole other story. I go to work, people shoot at me. Don't miss the fun on Everybody Loves Raymond. Weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30 on WGN. The WB's Big Sunday is now bigger than ever. Critics say Black Sash is a winner filled with romance and charm. You just stuff on that. It's cool, hip, and kicks butt. Are you trying to get me in trouble? They came here to learn the art of revenge. I'm not going down without a fight. They'll leave with respect for their lives. I know I hurt you. I'm so sorry. The new series, Black Sash, Sunday night at 8 on WGN. Well, you don't want to take anything for granted. You have Estes and Fogg tomorrow if Sean pitches in the series wrap-up like he did last time out at Wrigley Field. Mr. Hendry might be wanting to call a costume store. Well, I was going to say, costumes by design. What is that number again? I'm sure he has it on speed dial. And I think uh, Jim's getting the word from somebody <laughs> watching our telecast. That the story is out. And here in the 10th inning, Joe Borowski goes to work with a whopping five run lead. Borowski, who surrendered a run on a home run by Reggie Sanders last night, on for the 11th time, but the ERA a minuscule 093. And this game will belong to Mark Pryor, who will move to three and one if Borowski can shut him down. Makoviak, the first man he will face. And that's pumped over for a quick strike one. Boy, it's <laughs> so refreshing to see a team that finds ways to win games and enjoys playing together and playing good baseball. We have not seen much of that these last couple of years, Steve, and there is a completely different attitude amongst those men in that clubhouse. Well, Chip, I, I talked to a lot of my friends and I mentioned that in spring training for a team that was coming off a 67 win season, this team amazingly seemed to have a sense of confidence that got stronger as the spring went along. Well, and they played real good baseball that final week. Well, also, I think they realized when they looked at the pitching staff 1 through 11, even without Antonio Alfonseca. That they knew that they could match up with anybody in the division and probably anybody in the National League. And that would hold them in good stead as they look to move to playing 667 baseball in the early going. They would move to 12 and 6. And I'm sure it took a while for this team to win its 12th game last year. Win number 12 for the Cubs last season. Came in August. <laughs> it felt like it. Win number 12, May 6th. For the Cubs last year. And that one is ripped out of play. Nothing and two. Hesop Choi almost got picked off. Hesop ducked below the screen, pal. Yo! Well, Hesop gets taken out of the game and Saw a lot of 95 mile an hour fastballs, almost gets picked off by 
a little chopper to the right side. The Cubs after tonight would be within four wins of the club mark for most victories in the month of April. Line drive slicing out of play. That was 16 set in 1969. And they're coming up. One more with the Pirates tomorrow here on WGN. Then the Padres for three. Then we go to Colorado and to San Francisco. The Rockies playing very good baseball at home. And there's out number one. Remember last year, Sammy Sosa had an unbelievable series in Coors Field. And then the showdown with the Giants, who are playing great baseball themselves. And that's a tough place to hit Pac Bell Park. With a win tonight, the Cubs will gain a game on St. Louis, a game on Houston, and a game on Pittsburgh. Their lead will move to two over the Cardinals, two and a half over the Astros. Yes, it's early, but it's better to play on top than from way up the track. Right through there too. Abraham Nunez who is 0 for 3 has yet to hit the ball out of the infield. Sauerbeck and Pryor the pitchers of record in this game. Backing up at first Carroll's the flip to Borowski covering. Two men out. And Kevin Young the final Pittsburgh hope. Pirate fans are going to see some fireworks after the game. They saw some in the top of the tent when the Cubs played at five on six hits and sent ten men to the plate. I want to thank our great crew, our producer Pete Toma, Skip Ellison, our director, our assistant producer Mark Brady, and our executive producer of WGN Sports, Bob Vorwald. Job well done as well for the rest of our Great camera crew in Pittsburgh tonight. All the pictures, the sounds, the replays, and more fun to follow tomorrow afternoon. Mark Pryor will move to three and one, and he'll tie Kerry Wood for most wins on the club. Young, a fly ball to left, and the Cubs come back and win it. Boy, oh boy, this was some kind of a ball game. Mark Pryor, nine innings of one run baseball. Joe Borowski, a one, two, three, ten. And the G-men at the top of the order come through in a big way as the Cubs win another series 6-1, our final score tonight. Two pitchers on the Pirates with no ERAs coming into tonight, Sauerbeck and Williams. That's over, and the Cubs look for the sweep tomorrow and break out the bunny suit Jimmy boy. I'm Jackie Bang. Next on the WGN News, it's a big welcome home for the seven former prisoners of war. Their flight from Germany is expected to land any minute now in Fort Bliss, Texas. A small town in Indiana lays to rest its own hometown hero. We'll hear from the family of 25-year-old Marine Sergeant Dwayne Rios. And a tragedy in North Suburban Lake Forest. A young child is hit and killed by a train. Those stories, plus Jim says you might want to think about spending Easter Sunday indoors. The WGN News is next. You know him as the Golden Boy. He's Yori Boy. Soon they'll meet Mono E Mono. Don't miss the action when superstar Oscar De La Hoya defends his world title against former world champ Yori Boy Compass. May 3rd, live on pay-per-view. Compass wants the crown. Oscar says, come and get it. It's the Golden Boy and Yori Boy, man to man. It's a night of champions brought to you by Budweiser.
Another amazing victory for the Cubs. They're fifth in a row, 6 1, our final score. Mark Pryor, nine magnificent innings to run his mark to 3 and 1. Scott Sauerbeck and Mike Williams had some problems late, and the Cubs finally beat that Pittsburgh pin. He falls to 0 and 1. Our Budweiser play of the game. That line drive off the bat of Mark Brutzelanik. That scored Eric Karros, and the Cubs. Go on to win it by a 6 1 score, and they go for the sweep tomorrow here on WGN. It'll be an Easter Sunday showdown with Sean Estes and Josh Fogg linking up here in the series wrap up on PNC at PNC Park. Great game. This one was a lot of fun. More fun to follow tomorrow as this Cub Express behind Dusty Baker's boys keeps on rolling right along. Steve Stone and our entire crew, Chip Carey from Pittsburgh, a very happy Easter. Stay tuned. The WGN News is coming up next. Good night, everybody. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. The Illinois Lottery, where players have more fun. It is a beautiful early summer night in Chicago. Temperature at game time, 88 degrees. Winds out of the west at 9 miles per hour. That means the winds are blowing out tonight. Hopefully the Cubs offense can take advantage.